something like a Sunday at the yard. We got a four letter word for phenom. Any help? How about fiac? Fiac? Doesn't fit. No more. Yeah, that's good. That'll work. Twelve letter word for future. Israel housing. That's not bad for Sunday. And it fits. <laughs> Monday too. <laughs> hey guys, we got ten seconds to here. Come on, let's get the moving. No problem. I only got a couple left to go. <laughs> Might take you a half hour. Let's but... go. You just give me the countdown. We'll be ready. Don't worry. And Sunday. Mets and Dodgers. Next. Stadium in Flushing, New York. Today, the New York Mets host the Los Angeles Dodgers. Mets Baseball 95 is brought to you by Beachwood Aids Budweiser, the King of Beers. This Bud's for you. By American Express. By Bob Stores for people who wear clothes. By Glidden, celebrating 120 years of making the world a colorful place. And by Coca-Cola, always in the game, always Coca-Cola. Pitching for the Dodgers today, the Japanese sensation Hideo Nomo with a record of 10 and 3, an earn run average of 2.08. And on the mound for the Mets, Jason Isringhausen with a record of 2 and 2, an earn run average of 3.40. A beautiful Sunday and a chance for some more great theater in New York. It's Sunday in the Park with Adeo. Hello, everybody. Gary Thorne, Ralph Kiner. Delighted to have you with us. It's showtime, Ralph, and a lot of people are showing up to see it. And a big shoe out of here today, I'll tell you that. They got Adeo Nomo going on the mound for the Japanese uh, sensation. Has really packed him in everywhere he has gone. He's 26 years old, 6'2", 210 pounds. He leads the National League in strikeouts, shutouts, opponents batting average against and second in the National League in home run average. He had a great career in Japan, and he is the first Japanese player to ever make the all-star team here in the United States. Now, the Mets have been hot. They have won the first two games of this series. In the four games of the homestand, the Mets have allowed uh, five earned runs and only 21 hits in 36 innings. So they have done quite a job, so it should be a very good day today. And believe it or not, there's actually somebody else pitching today. His name is Jason Isringhausen, a rookie who may have something to say about this game. People on hand to watch it, lots of press people. Jay Horowitz, the real Jay Horowitz, live, coming up next with Ralph Kiner, right after this from Budweiser. Out of here today at Shea Stadium, the Japanese sensation pitching in the ball game today, and we have with us Jay Horwitz, who will interpret all that Japanese for us right now. Jay, what does that say? It says, uh, "Go football, giant, to Mets win the pennant next year." It does. Uh, well, you're in charge of public relations, and uh, you have the task of taking care of the media that attends the games that he pitches. Yeah, Ralph, that's here. You know, my department, Stella Fury, Shannon Dalton, and Mark Levine, have done a great job writing credentials day and night. We have about 150 people here, 40 still photographers, about five or six TV people, and the Dodgers have set up a press conference in the Jets, old Jets locker room after the game. And nothing before the ball game before he pitches. No, we just have oriental food in the press box. We do change yes. the food menu here. Yes, so we go all the way here at Shea Stadium, Ralph. A little sushi, too? Uh, sushi, a little a chicken teriyaki, and uh, bagels. Jay Horowitz, about the normal mania that takes place whenever normal pitches in a ballpark throughout the United States. He has been a sensation a since almost to win the Rookie of the Year honors. And we'll be back with the ball game and watch. No more on the mound against Jason Isringhausen. Today tells you something about the impact that Ao Nomo, the 26-year-old right-hander, has had on Major League Baseball this season. They were, and I say the press and they, were out when he came out in stretching, uh, taking all kinds of pictures, photographs. The game will be televised live back to Japan. It's going to be 2.40 in the morning 
for this game to be televised back home. They'll have 31 big screen TVs. There'll be 13 Japanese cities included in the broadcast, and they have enormous numbers of people who get up literally in the middle of the night to watch a Dan Nomo pitch. And why not? He is a very legitimate star and somewhat ironic. Nomo, the Japanese pitcher, starts today. The Mets obviously not planned this way, but Negro League ball players, some of the great stars of the Negro League, on hand here prior to the game, being recognized by the New York Mets. Tells you something about the breadth of this game of baseball and how far it has come and how far there is to go in the international aspects of it. Nine former Negro League players on hand here today, some great baseball stars, and it was really wonderful to see Met players, Ralph, come out and go through the line and shake hands with these stars of yesterday who have had such an impact on this game. They've had a tremendous impact. Of course, they played in Major League ballparks when they couldn't play with Major League teams when those teams were out of town, and they had a outstanding league going for many, many years, and Jackie Robinson, the first player to break into the Major Leagues after the turn of the century to play as a black player in Major League Baseball, starting with the Brooklyn Dodgers, and that was in 1947. You see those caps that were given out today as you look at Tommy Lasorda, the background, the kids with the red beaks and the black tops and the caps. Those are Birmingham Black Barons caps worn by one of the teams in the Negro League, and they were handed out to all of the fans coming in today. So a great collector's item to take home. And for those of you who love baseball, have not had a chance or have not read any of some of the great books out on the Negro Leagues, do so. I mean, you were talking about some really outstanding players and some great stories and we're delighted to have them here at Shea Stadium today along with about 30,000 people who'll be on hand as we said there's somebody else pitching in today's game and he's pretty darn good himself Jason Isringhausen two and two on the air he has never faced the Dodgers he has an earn run average of 3.40 this will be a seventh game start he's worked 39 and two-thirds innings giving up just 34 hits the opposition hitting just 238 against him in his major league career, which started in the middle of this season. Here you take a look at the lineup today for the Dodgers. Brett Butler making the start, his third game back with the Dodgers, of course. Jose Offram, the shortstop, will bat second. Mike Piazza is in the starting lineup today doing the catching. Eric Karros in the cleanup hole at first base. Raul Mondesi, the right fielder, will bat fifth. Delano DeShields starting at second base today. Dave Hansen will get the start at third and bat seventh. Chad Fonville will be in left field. He's played second base in this series. And Adeo Nomo is doing the pitching and batting ninth. Joe Orsolak will make the start in left field. Thompson will be in center. Chad Everett will be around in, uh, Carl Everett, rather, around in right. Going back to watch some TV on that one. Husky Vizcaino, Canton Bronya will be in the infield and the battery today, Isringhausen and Stinnett. The introductions of the teams today, and there are lots of signs around for, and some of the Met fans, uh, even uh, negative Nomo. They announced the starting lineups today. Both the regular announcement and a Japanese interpreter was on hand to help out. Batting fourth, second baseman number 12, Jeff Kent. Batting fifth, playing first base, number 26, Rico Bronya. Batting seventh, left fielder number 20, Ryan Thompson. Thompson. Batting seventh, number 42. Third baseman, Butch Husky. Batting eighth, the catcher, number 33, Kelly Stinnett. And batting ninth and pitching, number 44, Jason Isringhausen. Well, it's an international game and becoming more so. One of the things, Gary, about this uh, lack of communication between the Japanese and the uh, English-speaking people is the fact that you do learn a couple of expressions. Hikuku means keep the ball low. So if you hear hikuku in the, in the broadcast, you'll know what that means. Keep the ball low. He know cuckoo if he keep the ball low. Huh? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right, we're ready to go. 
And here's Brett Butler. He's gone three for seven in this series back in a Dodger uniform. 22 year old Jason Estringhausen delivers, and it's a strike call. It is a magnificent day here at Chase Stadium in New York. Absolutely clear skies, virtually no humidity. Temperatures are going to be in the mid 80s here this afternoon. Butler taking the breaking ball from Estringhausen in for a strike. And Estringhausen ahead on the count 0 2. You see Husky backing up at third base, but not all the way because Brett Butler will still lay one down even with two strikes on him. 0 2. And he got it. Estringhausen. And the breaking ball gets the strikeout, and Butler's retired. Is Ringhausen in his last outing got beat with a home run in the first inning, losing the game three to one. He pitched outstanding in that ball game, was the losing pitcher. But right here, the problem in that other game was he couldn't get the curveball early in the game to get it over the plate. Right there, he strikes out Butler with a good curve. He's allowed only three earned runs in his last two starts, covering some 16 innings. So Isringhausen with that two and two mark has been outstanding. Umpires today, Brian Gorman at the plate, Jerry Lane, Dana DeMuth, and Ed Rapuano. The umpiring crew for this series. Mets have won the first two games of it. And the Dodgers had a meeting as a result of that. Prior to today's game, Tommy Lasorda closed the clubhouse. His club remains a game ahead of the Colorado Rockies in the West, but they are on a road trip that has been very tough for them of late. The swing through the east. Rounded towards first. Rico Bronia, the short hop, and Bronia could not get it. Rico coming into today's game with the best fielding percentage among first basemen in the National League. Well, this is not an easy play. He figures he has to charge it to get to it in time to get the very fast Opperman, and he can't come up with a handle, and it's uh, going to be scored. The non decision right now. Right now, I hope it's going to be scored. It has to be either a base hit or an error, and it hasn't been made yet. There you see Bronya number one with uh, Colbrun, McGriff, Grace, and Eric Karros is in this game among the top four. And they've given him a hit. So it'll be a base hit for Offerman. That's a tough call, as Ralph said. It's not an easy play, even if he fields the ball cleanly. So Offerman's on with a single, and he's out there. Scraping away at his lead territory there. Infield's been watered down pretty good with that bright sun today, and Offerman's complaining about a little too damp out there, and maybe there's a reason for that, Ralph. A little home uh, work? It might be that because the Dodgers are a base stealing type ball club. They've had 81 stolen bases, and you don't want them to be running in this ball game if you can help it. So some gamesmanship might have been pulled off there been pretty wet especially right there around that spot where Offerman's getting his lead you know Gary in San Francisco when Maury Wills was playing for the Dodgers and going after the record of stolen bases he ended up with 104 which broke Ty Cobb's record of 96 the Giants watered down first base so heavily that they couldn't run <laughs> they had a mud pack out there he only had one stolen base caught seven times one one the count Mike Piazza making the start behind the plate for the Dodgers here he's about ready to qualify himself to be among the top of the offensive leaders in the National League as soon as he gets enough at bats to do so he will be there because he's putting up some unbelievable numbers yet again with that 359 batting average 18 home runs and he's red hot at the plate breaking ball by Estringhausen and he's got a good early curve ball today goes ahead of Piazza one ball two strikes. You'd have to say that Isringhausen has the best curveball in the National League. The big problem is getting the ball into the strike zone. He has been here just a short time, and he has impressed everybody. Isringhausen, part of that Mets future, of course, and this right-hander has been in control. Foul back. Lost the last game against Montreal. He has won two, lost two in his last four starts. Offerman going back, looking to third uh, Mel Fatano for any sign here with a one two count on Mike Piazza. There's Bobby Wine, who relays a lot of the signs out for the Mets. It may have been changed in this series because of Brett Butler going over. One ball, two strikes. Fastball, got him. Two strikeouts for Izzy. Well, the curveball setting up the fastball right here. 
He has a good fastball. He's up in the 90s with his fastball. That ball right down the middle, and he just beat Piazza. And he's a tough man to beat, hitting 359 coming in. In day games, he's hit 403 this year, so it hasn't been easy in the daytime to get him out. He doesn't strike out a lot. That's his 48th strikeout, along with 25 walks. Not only a power hitter, but a good contact hitter. Here's Eric Karos. Good idea to get him off the plate. Karos comes into this game, fourth in RBIs and seventh in home runs, and that big 307 batting average. He has not had a hit, however, in his last 10 at bats. Two down here, Offerman at first base. Springhausen. Offerman walking back to the bag before the throw was even started. Dodgers lead the series this season. They have won five of the eight games. Played against the New York Mets, where the Mets have won their last three all one run ball games and good baseball games to watch. Vizcaino's got a force at second, goes to Kent, and that'll do it. So one single, Offerman left on, Isringhausen with a couple of strikeouts, and Nomo goes to work. After this, from Coca-Cola Classic. Hideo Nomo making the start with that 10-3 and three mark. Five years he played in the Japanese Pacific League. He's faced the Mets three times, this being the third, and has a 1-0 mark against them. We'll tell you all about him as we go on. And this Mets lineup is brought to you by your Tri-State Quality Ford dealer, leading off the left fielder Joe Orsolak, batting second the shortstop Jose Vizcaino, batting third in right field Carl Everett, batting fourth at second base Jeff Kent, batting fifth the first baseman Rico Bronia, batting sixth the left the center fielder Ryan Thompson, batting seventh and playing third base Butch Husky, batting eighth the catcher Kelly Stinnett, and the pitcher Jason Isringhausen, batting ninth. Take a look at the defensive alignment for the Los Angeles Dodgers in the outfield left to right. They will have Fawnville, Butler, and Mondesi. Hanson, Offerman, DeShields, and Karros in the infield with uh, Nomo and Piazza forming the battery for the Dodgers. And Joe Orsolak will lead it off for the Mets. Brett Butler, of course, traded first game of this series Friday night. Walked in as a Met, went out on the field as a Dodger. Back with them and starting in that usual role in center field. Orsalak squares to bunt. Nomo misses up high with it, ball one. And the interesting thing that you pointed out, Gary, the other night, is that he sold his house in L.A. two weeks before he got traded back to the Dodgers. Perfect timing, <laughs> right? The fastball outside corner. Nomo featuring the fastball and the fork ball primarily. Off speed once in a while, but a tremendous fork ball that's just all over the place on hitters. And down. 1-1. One, one. That misses down low. And that was the fork ball right there. Rico Brown, you asked him if he could tell when the pitch was coming that fork ball you see allowing only 10 first inning runs in his 20 starts Bronia said you really can't he said you don't know it's a fork ball till it gets there and starts dropping on you second base Delano to Shields and Joe Orsalak is retired take a look at the Shields and the way he's dressed he wears those socks with the pants pulled way up in honor of the Negro Leagues because that's the way they used to be worn. In fact, that's the way everybody wore their socks in the old days, but the Negro League players wore them that way, as did the Major League players at that time, and he is doing that in honor of the Negro League players. Here's Apropos. Jose. Yeah. Jose Vizcaino. Almost fastball fouled off. Vizcaino, one for six against Nomo. Nomo pitched against the Mets on May 23rd. non decision here at Shea in a 6-4 win for the Dodgers. He went six innings, gave up four runs and eight hits. His first major league win was against the Mets. Vizcaino to right field. Pretty good wood. Mondesi moving over towards the line. We'll put it away in two down. Nomo got the victory on June 2nd in L.A. Eight innings, gave up only a run on two hits. His first major league win was against New York. Well, Nomo with this unusual windup, and people have said he will end up hurting his back or his arm with this windup. He did have some arm trouble. I don't really see anything wrong with that. He gets tremendous leverage with that coil that he has, and it also hides the ball, so it makes him very difficult to pick up. Carl Everett takes the strike. Nomo had his season cut short last year with a right shoulder tendonitis problem when he was pitching for the Pacific League. Five years there, an all-star every season. Foul back. Registered more strikeouts than innings pitched. 
in all five seasons and has continued to do that at the major league level with 175 strikeouts in 143 innings and only 59 walks. Fork ball misses down low ball and two strikes. Nomo actually retired from the Japanese League in order that he could be a free agent to be available for Major League Baseball and the Dodgers picked him up as a free agent and he got him and there you see him taking something off that fastball so Nomo retires the Mets in order ever to strike out victim no score after one now this from Chrysler. Dynamite Dash that's going to take place after the game has become a real favorite. I mean, hundreds and hundreds of youngsters stay on Dynamite Dash days and run the bases. Sacred ground, man. That's yeah. a great chance. Huh? That is. I mean, when I was growing up, yeah, Rob, I'm sure the same for you. The idea of going on a major league field for any reason, but to run the bases. Oh, my gosh. First time I went on the major league field, I was playing in the game. I couldn't yeah. get into it at that point. I snuck into Fenway Park <laughs> in the middle of the winter. In Boston, they happen to have the door open on the outfield fence, which goes right out to a street outside of Fenway. And I was walking by one day, literally in the middle of winter, snow in the field, and it was open. And I, I was not going to pass that up. <laughs> Raul Mondesi. And as a youngster, I just ran through the door, ran into the outfield, ran around center field, ran back out. He ran back out after they chased you out. <laughs> they there was nobody, uh, nobody there. Nobody there at all. It was empty. That's pretty good. Raul Mondesi, two for six in the series. Essringhausen's 1-0 delivery to short. Vizcaino off the glove. That was hard hit. Mondesi will make the turn, but he'll stay at first base. So the Dodgers have the leadoff man on here in the second inning. And again, we'll have to wait on the scoring on this. Well, this too a tough scoring play because the ball is hit extremely hard. The backhand play. Normally, Vizcaino would make that play, but he didn't quite get it in the pocket of the glove and it goes off of the glove for what we'll tell you now is either a base hit or an air as soon as they put it up. It's a hit. Fans ooh and ah again. <laughs> Score must be in a good mood. <laughs> Here's Delano to Shields who has not been in a good mood. Big signing contract to come with the Dodgers to be their second baseman but it hasn't worked out that way for him. He's batting only 235. Fonville has had a lot of chances at second. He's in left field today but Fonville is played a lot more because the Shields just is not producing. Been a lot of talk about the fact that he has asked to be traded away. He was an outstanding prospect for the Montreal Expos and was traded to the Dodgers for Pedro Martinez the younger brother of Ramon Martinez and so far Montreal way ahead in that trade. Yeah. No score here second inning runner at first two hits now off Isringhausen line to foul and almost picked off Jerry Lane. Whoa. Lane had two decisions to make and he made the right one first get out of the way and the second was whether it was foul or fair and he called it foul which it was look out got to get those decisions in priority he was watching the ball all the way thought hit foul territory that was a screamer off the bat of Delano DeShields. One of the things you got to be aware of here is that Mondesi is an outstanding base runner 21 stolen bases and 23 attempts Isenhausen has had trouble holding runners on. Well he makes a lot of throws a fake go. Kelly Stinnett behind the plate has tossed out eight of 53 this season. Speaking of the Mets catchers Todd Hundley. Well I'll tell you talk about a frustrated player Hundley's left wrist has not responded well. He's thrown the ball hard but trying to take batting practice shut him down for another couple of days. So Hundley remains on the DL runner goes hit and run on Brown, you can't get that one Everett over Mondesi's on his way to third and the Dodgers back to back singles leading off the second have runners at the corners with nobody out. This ball again ripped very hard. It was a fastball and right by Brown you had no chance holding the runner at first base. Mondesi was running with a pitch so he goes first to third and the Dodgers threatening here for the first time. And Dave Hansen, who does not get a lot of starts for the Dodgers will stand in here with two on and nobody out. Jason Isringhausen now three hits off him. Two of them shots off two of the best fielders on the Mets one on Bronia and one off this guy glove but both hit hard and both counted as base hits. 
Hansen stands in with a chance to add to his RBI totals. 31st start at third base this season for veteran Dave Hansen. He's hitting only 182, though, with runners in scoring position. Go along with a 276 overall average. And the Mets are happy that Wallach's not playing. He's hitting 500 against the Mets this year with 14 hits. He has really worn the Mets out. Left-hander to short, runner Mondesi coming home. They go to Kent for one relay to first, they turn two, but a run will score. Mondesi crosses, giving the Dodgers the one-nothing lead. No RBI on that one as Hanson gets into the 6-4-3 three double play. Two down. Well, the Mets gladly traded the run for the double play. They were playing back for the double play, and they got it. This guy, you know, the cannon on the first base to Bronia. So that'll clear the bases. And now there are two away. And we'll bring up the man who's played second base in this series for the Dodgers and today finds himself in left field. Chad Fonville, the rookie. Very oh. fast runner, real quick, and he's done an outstanding job for them. When the Shields was hurt, he came up to play and played so well that he's getting a lot of extra starts. Three for six in this series and has hit safely in his last four ball games. He had to go to the Brett Butler school. He's almost identical to Brett Butler the way he hits. He bunts. He gets a lot of infield hits. Mets play him just like they play Butler when he's at the plate. There's something he will do often. That square around and try and drop it down. Nine infield hits, ten bunt singles. Of course it, I was going to say, Gary, that bunt's not that important right here with the pitcher coming up next and two men out. And he takes that one down low. The Dodgers have three of the top four in infield hits in this game, and Butler, Fonville, and Mondesi. Pretty amazing, all on one team. And that's a strike. Butler ranks first at infield hits in the National League. Mondesi's third, and Fonville's fourth. All on one club. That's a lot of hits there. The ball didn't travel very far. Yeah, that's not very good. That's not a good stat. 3-2 delivery. Looped to center field. Thompson was playing shallow, and Ryan Thompson will put it away. A run in on a couple of hits. Nobody left on. Dodgers take the lead here in the second one. Nothing. Now this from Nobody Beats the Wiz. 16 since the All-Star break. We'll try and continue. They're winning ways here against the Dodgers. Down one nothing. And as was true in Los Angeles, also here in New York, the uh, Mets have said there are they're expecting four to five thousand uh, Japanese U.S. citizens or visitors to be on hand here today, and from other Asian countries as well. And that's happened a lot in Los Angeles. It's wonderful for baseball. It's great for the sport. People who were not coming to the park, Nomo has created a cause celeb that's bringing them here to see the game. Jeff Cat will lead it off. And no most fastball is in there for a strike. You were talking earlier, Gary, about the number of people that watch the game at Japan when he is pitching. It's being televised over there. They estimate 30 million people watch him when he pitches for the Dodgers. 2.40 in the morning. <laughs> a lot of sake is being consumed. Toward center, Butler coming will not have a play on this one. And Kent has the first hit for the Mets. A leadoff single here in the second inning. It's just Jeff's second hit in his last 12 at bats, so he'll take him. Lead off man on, Rico Bronya coming up. The Mets have not been hitting the ball lately. They went from one extreme to the other. The beginning of the month, they were the hottest team in baseball offensively. Over the last 10 days, they are dead last in the National League and team batting average. So it's been an all or nothing August thus far for the Mets. Yet, they have won these one run ball games three of them in a row and are now 13 and 17 in one run games. Rico Baronia fouls that one back one strike. Baronia is one of those who's having a time of it at the plate. Mike Cubbage at third with the signs. Rico a couple of hits in his last 12 at bats. Frank Howard over at first. 0 1 count. Nobody had to ask Frank Howard to come out 
when the Negro League players were being recognized behind home plate. He is wonderful about that and his sense of the game and history. As soon as the Negro League players came out, Frank was right there and genuinely happy to see them and welcoming them and actually getting some autographs. He's a great guy for that sort of thing, and he'll be out there for the Dynamite Dash with those kids after the game for hours. He'll stay out there, give them high fives and low fives. Started his career with the Dodgers, has been a great part of baseball throughout his long career. He's an outstanding home run hitter and did manage the Mets for a while. Managed in Washington. You know, I had the privilege of playing against a lot of those Negro stars in winter ball in California. I hit against Satchel Page. I saw Muriel Suttles. I saw a lot of great Negro League ball players that never had the chance to play in the major leagues. Of course, Satchel Page later on in his career didn't make it to the majors. Where there were some hitters in that league, weren't there, Ralph? There he had some great hitters and some great fielders. Really great players. Yeah. There's no question about it. There were a couple of Negro League players, uh, Negro star players that played in organized baseball in the 1800s, but not after 1900 until Jackie Robinson. Fork ball, did he go? No. Held up at Rapuano, the call at third. Two balls, two strikes on Rico Bronia. Some of his Connecticut hometown fans on hand here today. Saw a youngster before the game who wanted to show me his sign. That he had made, go Rico. And that's what keeps baseball going. Kids like that, Rico. One of those who was right there to greet him when he came down by the field before the game. Two balls, two strikes on Bronya. Nobody out. That's with a runner at first base in Kent. Dodgers up one nothing here in the second. He's got a real chance to be a real star. In New York City, I think. He has the attitude to make it happen. He puts the numbers up. Swung on and missed. Fork ball down and away. Nomo's got his second strikeout, one away. Batting six, number 20. This Jennifer is the fork ball that Nomo so well known for and it drops out of the strike zone. Most fork balls or split finger fastballs are not in the strike zone. If you could lay off of the pitch it would make the pitcher much easier to hit but it gives you the feeling that the ball's a fastball in the strike zone and then when you start your swing it's too late to stop. Ryan Thompson making his return in this series off the DL chases heat and doesn't catch it one strike. Ryan's gone two for seven since getting back in the lineup on Friday. Those are the season numbers for Thompson. He's back in center field for the Mets today. Nomo's averaging 11 strikeouts per nine innings. He has fanned 10 or more eight times this year. Those 175 strikeouts right at the top of the National League. Everybody talks about the fact He's almost a shoe in it seems for rookie of the year. What about the Cy Young Award. He got a shot at that but you do have uh, Gary Maddox just a, just a little bit of a shade ahead of him. Not much. Numbers are somewhat for Greg Maddox one nine six for Nomo two oh eight. There are offsetting categories for those two. Because Nomo's got the opposition hitting that one sixty eight. That's an incredible number. Very impressive. It doesn't matter right or left. Left handers hitting 178 off him. Right handers 160. He has given up 10 home runs. They'll catch up to the fastball sometimes. And he does bring people to the park. <laughs> and they're still coming off the seven train here in Queens. No Mo checking Kent at first. 2 1. Again, the fastball. Two balls, two strikes on Ryan Thompson. Well, Maddox has 12 wins. And he leads the league in ERA at 1.96, just a shade ahead. He's second to Nomo in opponents batting average against 204 against Maddox, 160 against Nomo. Their their stats are running parallel right down the line. So this last month and uh, a half is going to make a big difference. Oh, mercy! You look at all that heat, then you get one of those. Looks like a butterfly. Three strikeouts. All three of his strikeouts have been on the split finger fastball. And this one has a lot of actions you can see. Very devastating pitch. Like Maddox, Ralph, 
And another K factory going here. They used to hang him for Doc. Now for Nomo. Like Maddox, he can cut both sides of the plate either way with that fork ball. The ball sits between your two fingers, and it depends on the way you put the pressure on the ball from one finger or the other, the forefinger or the middle finger, to which way it will break. And uh, normally it breaks down all the time. There's no doubt about that. So you don't have to worry about it being anything but a downer. It is that if you're the hitter. It's a downer in a lot of ways. <laughs> Butch Husky joining the team on Friday from Norfolk. Boy, he's blowing that heat by him. One ball, one strike. Husky's 0 for 2 at the plate since coming up, but he has made some outstanding plays at third base. Brooks Robinson style shots on Friday night. Two great plays Friday night. Showing a lot of quickness for a big, big man. This guy is immense. One ball, one strike, two down. Dodgers leading at one nothing. Nomo with Kent at first. There's that fork ball fouled off. One ball, two strikes. They list uh, Husky as 240. He left about 60 pounds at Duke University in that special diet. Got him down to where he's a swell 240. He's a big tall guy, and his name certainly is apropos. Husky. He's strong. He's got the power. Trying to cut down on strikeouts as you see that wide stance that Toby Hara helped him out with at Triple A. No more missing up high. That was um, a split finger that got away there. Tom McCraw, the hitting instructors, talked to Toby Hara down at the Triple A level as they've worked on Husky's batting style. That one slipped right out. Almost a Ryan Duran. <laughs> two balls, two strikes. 26 year old right hander with two away. Kent's running. Breaking ball outside. Piazza's throws on the money. Didn't get it. The Shields couldn't get the tag on in time. Stolen base for Jeff Kent. Well, they got the right pitch to go on the first curveball that Noma has thrown in this game. And a little split second of extra time gets Kent enough time to get in under the tag by the Shields. And for Kent, that's his third stolen base in five attempts. So now the count three two. I think Piazza's got solid arm. He got that one down there in plenty of time. Except for the break. Three two. Inside out swing fought off by Butch Husky. Well, that was ball four right there. That pitch almost on the ground. You know amazing thing about Piazza. They signed him uh, after everybody in the world begged the Dodgers to sign him. Nobody would sign him else. No one else would sign him. This ball really low. And uh, Piazza turned into a catcher. They said he can't play anyplace else. And he's become one of the outstanding catchers. Tommy Lasorda is mighty happy to have him on the team. And that work behind the plate and that great bat. 3 2 delivery. Center field, Butler. No, right field, sorry. Ball drifts over and Mondesi's there to put it away. So a leadoff single by Kent goes for not as the Mets strand one at second base. Dodgers lead it after two. 1 0. Now this word from Infinity. Score one nothing and Ralph there was a little groundwork done between innings. The Dodgers were complaining about the fact that that first base area was a little bit too damp to get a good jump at running. So the first base umpire Gary Lane has had the ground school out to uh, kind of speed it up a little bit. They ought to do that at the racetrack when you got those mutters. <laughs> Not a fast track today at <laughs> first. Right. Uh. Yeah. They got that thing. They had it <laughs> slowing down. And now it's back to normal, I guess. You can go back to the regular racing form. Jason Isring has a no walks, couple of strikeouts, three hits off him, and a run in in that last inning. One nothing Dodgers. We go to the third. And Nomo gets his time at bat. Four hits and 51 times at bat. I inquired today as to whether or not he hit when playing in Japan, and he did not. There are two leagues in Japan. He played in the Pacific League for five years and they do not pitchers do not take at bats in that league in the Central League which is considered the upper echelon league the pitchers do hit. So no more getting a chance in the National League to take some cuts like that and he's gone. Isringhausen has his third strikeout and there's one away here in the third. 
There's a break in the action. Ought to be a great time to break for the great taste of Bud Light. A big hit with fans everywhere because it won't fill you up and never let you down. So make it a Bud Light. And this curveball makes a believer out of Nomo because he didn't even come close to that. But he's not the first one. Who will say I'm not paid to hit <laughs> in Japanese. Brett Butler batting at 312. Brett has hit 413 over his last 33 games. Versus the New York Mets. Almost a 300 batting average. Struck out his first time up. Mr. Springhausen down low to him. Two balls and no strikes. He was hitting 256 at the All-Star break, and now he has his average up to 312. Just on a tear for the last two months. This Ringhausen with a fastball on the outside corner. Doing one to Brett Butler, who's three for eight since rejoining the Dodgers on Friday night. 2 1 delivery. Ryan for the base hit. It is a foul ball. Kelly Stinnett up in a hurry on that one, but in foul territory. 2 and 2. Stinnett really tried his best to make that ball appear to be a fair ball. He got into fair territory and then reached back and grabbed the ball and pulled it into fair territory, but the umpire said, nope, foul ball. I see Stinnett try to get the call. Had that back foot in foul territory. Good call by Brian Gorman, the home plate umpire. Two balls, two strikes again. That's drawn in in the outfield on Butler. 2-2. Two -two. Slider missed inside. Not by much. Three balls and two strikes. Isringhausen has done well in holding the opposition down. They're only hitting 238 off him. Left-handers at 279. Right-handers just 200. 3-2, and he walked him. First walk given up by Izzy in the game puts the always dangerous Brett Butler on at first base with one away. Shortstop Jose Opperman. And as Ralph said, one of the things Isringhausen's got to work on holding the base runners, giving his catcher a little more time to make throws. And we've seen him throw more over to first base after he had a couple of starts under his belt. Opperman had the single his first time up. Butler with 21 stolen bases on at first one out one of the reasons Tommy Lasorda had the meeting with his team not only have they lost the first two games of this series but they are on a road trip which over the last five years has been a real struggle for them coming to New York Philadelphia and Montreal and they're losing on that trip again. The last five seasons, the Dodgers are 32 and 68 in New York, Philadelphia, and Montreal. That is really amazing. It's sort of the reverse of what happens to the clubs that go out to play on the West Coast. It's yep. tough to win out there when you come from the East. They're getting the opposite side of that, moving from West to East. They are four and seven this year amongst those cities. Butler goes, throw down Stanett, all the way to center field. Ryan Thompson backing it up. Butler will get a stolen base. Well, apparently they dried out the lane from first to second with that work that was being done at this half inning, and Stanett throws it over the head of Vizcaino trying to cover. And for the Mets, good job by Thompson to back up the play and keep Butler at second base. So there'll be a stolen base. Butler now with 22 stolen bases. And a career number, including that steal, 68% effective in stealing bases. 525. Offerman now with the RBI chance, and Esringhausen will step off. Dodgers leading at 1 nothing. Offerman, who's batting 294 overall, is 267 with runners in scoring position. Switch hitter. A little better numbers from the right side, but 285 left handed, 307 right. Isringhausen falls behind on him here. Two balls and one strike. This is the first part of the road trip for the Dodgers on this swing. Philadelphia and Montreal yet to come for them. They go to Montreal after today's game. Izzy's pitch is popped up. Left field. 
Arcelac with that bright sun and that high sky puts it away. So Offerman's the second out here in the third. And now this Ringhausen's got his work cut out for it. Catcher Mike Piazza. You see that beautiful sky here. Storm and all the winds that came in the New York area with a hurricane roaming around have cleared the skies and cleared the humidity. And that high sky is what ball players call this. No clouds at all to get a background makes it tough. Plus the fact that the sun is a factor. Mike Piazza, the catcher. Piazza struck out his first time up. He has the third best average in the National League with runners in scoring position. This man, guy. oh man, these are incredible numbers. This one against right handers. Only Tony Gwynn hits right handers at a better clip. 379 against right handers. And, and he hits left handed. Yeah. And 380 with runners in scoring position for Mike Piazza. That is a Tony Gwynn kind of number. Uh, he struck out Piazza with a fastball after he set him up with a curve. He starts him off with a curve here. He's got to be careful with this fastball if he throws it. Didn't throw it. Little movement down and away on the slider that time. One ball, one strike. This Ringhausen, a walk and three strikeouts thus far. A run on three hits off him. Looking for his third win of the season, and this is seventh start. 1-1 one, one count, Butler at second base. Breaking ball, missing way outside that time. Two balls and one strike. The psychology of pitching is reversed right now because Piazza can look fastball, so the balance has changed because before Ismringhausen was in a, he was ahead in the count. Now he's behind. It's a different philosophy entirely. 2-1, off speed, missed up high. An off-speed breaking ball that didn't. Three balls and one strike. Now, one thing for sure, you don't want to take this guy on with a fastball. He, he is such a good hitter. There, this, in, my, in my viewpoint, he's the best hitter in the National League. Garros on deck. Two down, Butler off second base. 3-1. Inside, good location on it. 3-2. and two. He took him on with a fastball, but he got away with it. But it was a good pitch. It was on the inside part of the plate. Piazza hitting 3-1. and one. If you're a good hitter, you look for the pitch in one place and take it if it's not there. Now it's a little different. Isringhausen trying to get out of the inning without damage. Butler off second, 3-2. Butler running. And he walked him, and no play at third. Butler's in with a stolen base. So Butler running on the pitch gets his second stolen base in this trip around. First and third now. Second walk given up by Isringhausen. Well, Isringhausen forgot about the runner at second on the 3-2 pitch. This is the 3-1 pitch, a fastball that is a tough pitch to hit. It's on the inside, so Piazza takes it. Now another fastball, and he walks him on the high pitch, but Butler running with the pitch took advantage of the fact that Isringhausen was concentrating on the batter, and he got a stolen base. Now Eric Karros, first and third, two down. Boy, these Dodgers in the middle, they may not score a lot of runs. They are 13th in the league in runs next to last but when they get chances they've got guys in the middle who deliver we told you about Piazza's numbers well Eric Karros is batting 358 with runners in scoring position no slouch there 1 0 count off the end of the bat Rico Bronya and Isringhausen works his way out of it as Karros is retired the Dodgers with a couple of walks leave them both on they have a one nothing lead now this from your local Honda dealer Stadium, don't miss Tropicana Banner Day on Sunday, August 27th. You can show off your team spirit in the banner parade starting at noon. Contest winners receive great prizes, so be creative. For tickets, call 718-507-TIXX during business hours or stop by the Mets Clubhouse shops. A per-ticket surcharge applies. Great to have you with us, Gary Thor and Ralph Kiner, and big crowd on hand. And lots of signs that look like that. Where's Jay Horowitz? Who can interpret that for us? Well, you can be sure it doesn't say, let's go Mets. <laughs> it would to Jay. <laughs> 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 
They are loving it and couldn't have a better day to be here. It'll be one of the bigger crowds of the season for the Mets on this Sunday afternoon. It serves as a shield after being put up for television. You know, Gary, uh, letters to the editor are always something that papers carry all over the country, and I got this one out of the L.A. Times, and it's about Noman. It says, Hail baseball's newest promo, the Dodgers pitcher Nomo. The media will rest. Fernando can contest when the fastball goes slow-mo. A haiku. <laughs> <laughs> Here's uh, Kelly Stinnett. No more as walk none and struck out three. Stanette, Isring, Hauser, and Orsalag do up here. That's pretty good. Yeah, it isn't bad. That's and you good. know, referring to Fernando Valenzuela, the the media with Valenzuela far exceeded what Nomo is getting. I mean, it was it was really amazing what he did with the with the Hispanic population. I mean, they uh, they turned out in in unbelievable amounts of numbers in 1981 when he hit the scene. Fernando Mania. There are five beat reporters from Japan for newspapers who cover the Dodgers every game. I couldn't believe that. I mean, a regular beat reporters because of Nomo. So they're covering every game and filing stories just like other beat writers do for teams. I mean, those stories probably all going back to Japan. Yeah, all yeah. back to Japan. Yeah. Yeah. There are a couple of writers from uh, publications, Japanese publications in Los Angeles also here did he go Stanette wants a check no says Jerry Lane three balls two strikes on Kelly Stanette and Valenzuela was pitching for the Dodgers the Spanish broadcast that went into Mexico were almost double the amount as far as listening audience and the English speaking broadcast well Nomo's exciting him right now in early morning in Japan as he has struck out four one away here in the third Oh, Throws almost. a lot of strikes, doesn't he? He's uh, he's a major league pitcher. There's no question about that. He got two million dollars to sign before he pitched a pitch for the Dodgers in spring training. And looks like money well spent right now. Dodgers run a ferocious battle in that West, though. They have been fortunate in losing their last three. That Colorado's lost their last two, so they've remained a game up. But. They've given San Diego a chance. And San Diego's right back in it. San Diego's won seven of their last ten, and they're only three games out. And Tommy Lasorda's feeling the chase. As we said, one of the reasons he had that team meeting is that he's got to get this team turned around. San Diego's got the early lead on Montreal. One of the games that the Dodgers were interested in was a game that's played Friday night in Colorado. The Cubs playing up there and they won it 26 to 7 against the Rockies. In a rain delay. They had a long rain delay. You believe that? No most just as human as anybody else. He walks the opposing pitcher. Now he's learning the United States way. In that game that was played in Colorado where the Cubs won 26 to 7, it tied the most runs ever scored by the Cubs in the modern era of baseball. But the Cubs hold the all-time record of scoring runs. They won a game 36 to 7 against Louisville back in 1897. And Hannes Wagner played in that ball game, the great Pittsburgh Pirate player. There was a pitcher who started that game for Louisville named Frazier. And he was marrying a Chicago girl. And before the game, they had all kinds of gifts presented to him for wedding gifts. He probably went out, got knocked out of the box, and had lost the ball game. It always works that way. 36 to 7. Can you imagine that? 36 runs in one ball game, a nine inning ball game. Runner on at first, Isringhausen, Joe Orsalak, the leadoff batter. One ball, one strike. In that Cub Rocky game, Saberhagen was knocked out of the box in the first inning. He gave up seven runs. You know who the winning pitcher in that game was? Fellow could use 20, 26 runs. Anthony Young was the winning pitcher. A Y one one. One one delivery. Nomo giving up his first walk to Isringhausen and now falling behind two and one on Orsalak. Nomo will put some people on base via the walk. Even though he has the 179 strikeouts now, he also has given up 60 free passes. Kyle and Martinez are one and two in that 
dubious department for a pitcher and Nomo third with 60 walks and 146 innings. Kyle sent back to the minor leagues. Yeah. But still effective all those K's can help out. Barcelac fouls it back. Joe's getting a shot in the leadoff spot for only the second time against Florida. He hit in the leadoff spot earlier this season the first time back in June. Now back in that leadoff spot in this game he grounded out his first time up good numbers here at Shea. Joe Orsalak out in left field one on one down one nothing Dodger lead in the third. No more delivery and just missed had Orsalak fooled he was looking for something on the outside part of the plate and was leaning and really had to get back and had no chance to swing three and two. This guy in on deck. Elmo will turn uh, 27 the end of this month. Rookie season for him though. 3 2 count. Runner goes outside. Ball four. He's walked two in a row. Two on, one away. Well, this pitch is close. The runner going with a pitch. That's the pitcher on first base, not being held on. Is Ringhausen goes into second base. Doesn't have to make that slide as it's ball four. He was taking no chances, and now the Mets have a chance to get back in the ball game. They're trailing one nothing on the two walks by Nomo, which brings out Wallace, the pitching coach of the Dodgers. Dave Wallace is trying to settle him down here and break the current rhythm of walking two in a row. He's probably saying, keep the ball low. How do you say that? <laughs> I got to I got to look it up. I, <laughs> I get out my Japanese book here and look it up. Uh, just what does he say <laughs> when he goes out there? Vizcaino, two on, one away. Infield double play depth. Vizcaino fly to right his first time up. One for seven against Nomo. Takes the fastball down low, ball one. And what he said was haikuku. There it is. That's about all any pitching coach has to say usually on the, when they go out there is not much else you can say. I get it over but don't give him anything good to hit. There is you what go. They usually say. <laughs> this guy you know, is batting 282 will wait. Isringhausen look back to second base. Bear in mind that is the pitcher out there as the lead runner for the Mets Jason Isringhausen. Without a lot of speed and doesn't get a lot of chances on the base paths. 1 0 to this guy you know. Mets have only one hit. Right field. Mondesi going back at the wall, looking up. Goodbye, home run, Jose Vizcaino. And the Mets lead it, 3 to 1. His second home run of the season. He didn't by Cuckoo. And he got <laughs> tagged. Yeah, it wasn't a low pitch. It was up right around the waist. This is the 11th home run given up by Nomo. And we'll take a look at it here. Here's the fastball. After the two walks, he got the fastball up right in the Bell High region, and Vizcaino takes it downtown. Carl Everett, 1-0 delivery to him. So the two walks by Nomo cross the plate. Vizcaino's second home run of the season. He has now hit both of them left-handed. Three RBIs for him, and the Mets go on top. Just their second hit off Nomo, but they've got a 3-1 lead. Orsalak and Is Isringhausen both walked and both scored. Well, sort of saying, what did I tell you to tell him? You must not have told him what I told you to tell him. <laughs> 2-1. And he falls behind to Kyle Everett. 3-1. and one. Sports. Nomo had his toughest outing in his last start against Chicago, giving up 11 hits in that game. He won it 7-5, but got touched up. Fouled off by Everett. No play for Hanson. We're going to say that uh, Lasorda was taken apart in a Sports Illustrated article. 
In the article, they said he was out of touch and overrated as a manager, and he couldn't relate to his young players. And Lasorda came back and says, well, if that's the case, how come I've had seven rookies of the year? Well, and here might be his eighth right yeah, here. That's right. Drill to right field by Everett way back. A home run off the screen. Kyle Seventh home run of the season. Kyle Everett off the fair screen. Down the right field line, back to back home runs off Nomo by the Mets. I don't believe he's ever had back to back home runs hit off of him. Reminds me of the time that Tim Wallach hit two home runs off Dwight Gooden way back when. He was the first to ever hit two home runs in one game off Gooden. Ralph, just watching, you can tell what happens here in this second time through the lineup. The Mets hitters could not catch up with that fastball the first time around. The second time up, that's the pitch they're waiting on. And those home runs have been hit off the fastball. They're just taking the fork ball and not trying and waiting for heat. Kent takes it inside, 101. That was a split finger right there. You wonder how much those walks, he walked the pitcher and then Orsolak affected him about thinking about throwing just fastballs for strikes and he's been caught on those two and he falls behind again two balls and one strike Nomo has given up 12 home runs on the season now seven of them to left handers both in this game by guys batting left handed this guy no one ever Jeff Kent's looking for one himself two and two. We just got word that he has had one other time that he has given up back to back home runs in the ball game here in the States. Make that take that back. It's the second time the Mets have had back to back home runs this year. It was Ken and Chris Jones who did that. That was in the mile high city of Denver. Jeff Kent bites off the fastball holding the count two balls and two strikes. So the Mets explode here after the one out walk to the opposing pitcher by Nomo and then the walk to Orsalak that followed three run homer by Viscaino and a solo shot by Kyle Everett Kent going after the fork ball that time is strikeout victim number five First base Jeff base now base one for two on the day and there are two down here in the third that's up four to one. Rico Bronya strike out victim his first time up. Rico would like to cut down on the K's. He is tied for eighth right now in strikeouts, 82 times this year. Still putting up solid numbers at 290 and 14 home runs, 51 RBIs. Two down bases empty. Let's have them buzzing here at Shea Stadium with their. Four runs and three hits. Two strike count on Bronya. O2 delivery. Fast ball. Wouldn't chase it. One ball, two strikes. Tom McCraw, the hitting instructor. Vizcaino to his left. Everett to the right. Jeff Kent right at you. One two and kept it away from him. Six strikeouts for Nomo but a big Just inning for the Mets. Four week runs week two hits two homers Viscaino and Everett and the Mets have a four to one lead. Now this from Budweiser. Jason Esringhausen with some runs to work with 4-1 Mets. This copyrighted telecast authorized under television rights granted by Sterling Double A Enterprises LP. Solely for the entertainment of our audience, any publication reproduction. The use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of Sterling Double A Enterprises LP prohibited. Any commercial or other use of the program, such as by charging commission for its showing, likewise prohibited. Big inning, Ralph Kiner. That's up. Absolutely a big inning, and 
The first pitch to Mondesi is fouled back out of play strike one. Mondesi with a base hit off the glove of Vizcaino's first time up. Mondesi came into this game hitting 300. 18 home runs, 65 runs batted in. Isringhausen on the mound has given up one run on three hits. And he comes back to Mondesi with a breaking ball for a ball. One and one. Mondesi, the rookie of the year last year for the Dodgers. First rookie of the year was back in 1947, the first time they had that award, and it was Jackie Robinson who won it in 47. Dodgers have had 14 rookies of the year since 1946. Mondesi. The rookie of the year last year and this year a chance for Nomo to be the rookie of the year. 2 1 pitch and it's ball three so Isringhausen gets behind three and one as he opens up here in the fourth inning. Brought these bagels Ralph. Kappa Kappa Skew for the uh, fraternity sorority what is that. Kappa Kappa Skew. Yeah. Yeah. They're good. They're, they're out. They look good. Fastball fouled away, and the count goes to three and two. Some of those rookies of the year, Frank Howard, back in 1960. Fernando Valenzuela, 1981. Eric Kiris in 1992. Mike Piazza, 1993. 3-2 pitch, swung on and missed, and he got him with a fastball. So Mondesi, the fourth strikeout victim for Jason Isringhausen. Second baseman, so far, Isringhausen's you. having the kind of day he'd hoped for. I mean, obviously, all the publicity for this game has gone to Nomo. But this rookie would love to set out here in this day a little bit of publicity for himself, and he's doing it right now. And his first pitch to Delano De Shields, who had a base hit his first time up, a breaking ball for ball one. De Shields on a hit and run play, single to right field to move Mondesi over to third, and Mondesi scored on a double play. That's how the Dodgers got their one one run. Mets with four runs in the third and a three-run home run by Jose Vizcaino after a walk to the pitcher Isringhausen, a walk to Joe Orsalak, then the three-run home run, and then Everett. Followed with a home run to make it four to one. And that fastball gets away. It's three and oh. The Shields hitting 235. In his first major league ball game for the Montreal Expos, he had four hits. What a way to start. Of course, if you start with four hits, it's downhill from there on. May not be such a great way to start. <laughs> and that pitch three and one. To raise the expectations. Casey Stengel got four hits in his first major league ball game back there you in go. whatever century <laughs> it was. There's the 3 1 pitch, a good call strike, and uh, the fastball for a 3 2 count. Willie McCovey for the Giants got four hits and four at bats in his first game. Anybody ever had a five hit game to start? It's possibly Cecil Travis might have. This ball hit deep to right. It's going. It is gone. Goodbye. The Shields with a home run on the 3 2 fastball. And the Dodgers get one back. So it's now 4 to 2 in favor of the Mets. The Shields picking up the home run, his fifth of the year. Good cut on this one. Jason Isringhausen now has given up five homers on the season. Lino De Shields, that was right in the wheelhouse for him. He rocked it over the 371 mark. That's number five on the year for De Shields. And the batter, Dave Hansen, takes the first pitch for strike one. Hansen grounded into a double play his first time up. The curveball for a ball, one and one. Watch where this was for De Shields right there. He doesn't reach out a lot over the plate. He didn't have to on that pitch. And Hanson fouls it off one and two. Boy, those home runs going out of here. That ball didn't look like it was hit that hard. Ball really carrying well to right field. 
Shields has been having all kinds of problems with the Dodgers trying to get into the lineup. He's been hurt. He also hasn't played well. And the curveball two and two. Is Ringhausen with a record of two and two facing the Dodgers for the first time in his major league career. And it goes to a full count again. Last time on a 3 2 count, the fastball. Taking out our National League scoreboard, this is the action here. Matt Williams back in action for the Giants as a starting player after being out for over two months with a broken foot. And that's a walk. So now the time run is at the plate. The batter is Chad Vonville, who is not a home run hitter. You mentioned how home runs have been flying out of Shea this season. There have been 97 home runs now at Shea in the 52 games. So it's continued to be about a couple of home runs a ball game here at Shea, which puts it right up among the leading ballparks where home runs are being hit this year. That's hit by both teams in one ball game. An average of about two a game. Matt Williams, as we mentioned, getting back into the lineup. Boy, the Giants, they may have a chance to make a run at it. Williams out since June 4, pinch hit in last night's game. And Ralph said playing regularly in a, today and picked up the home run. Those kind of numbers you want in your lineup. 57 home runs over what would be considered a full season 162 games in a normal season now with expansion baseball. That's an amazing stat 50 cents. Unbelievable. Giants are seven and a half games behind the Dodgers coming into today's play. They're in last place in the West. And with that wild card anything could happen. Wild card situation as Isringhausen falls behind 2 and 0 pitching to the time run at the plate. In that wild card race, Houston is leading. They have a two and a half game edge on Colorado, a four game edge on the Cubs, a four and a half game edge on the Phillies, and a four and a half game edge on the San Diego Padres. So the wild card, the best team in the National League with the best record, will be the fourth team in the playoffs. And it probably won't be from the Western Division in the National League, Ralph. That's why for the Dodgers, Colorado, San Diego, San Francisco, it looks as though you're going to go into postseason play out of the West. You've got to win the West in order to make it. And the Dodgers, as we said, have lost three in a row now. Colorado a game out. San Diego just three behind L.A. in third. Really adds a lot of interest to baseball with the wild card because teams that normally would be out of the race, such as in the Eastern and Central Division, they're in it. Well, even and more so in the American League, Ralph, where you've got Seattle and Milwaukee battling. Milwaukee's 18 games behind Cleveland, but they're only two and a half games out of a postseason play for a wild card berth. Yeah, Texas is the number one team in the wild card thing. Yankees are a game and a half back Seattle two Milwaukee two and a half and Kansas City three and a half. There you see it now that's just for the wild card position of course. Rangers a game and a half ahead of the Yankees for that and sure looks like the Red Sox aren't going to surrender first place in the East. They've gone out west and won their first couple of games out there so maybe wild card or nothing. For the Yankees 2 2 pitch to Funville fills it out so it's now full count. This is our National League wild card race that we talked about. How can the Cubs be in a race? <laughs> That's the beauty of the wild that, cards. That might be the way they'll win their chance to be in a World Series for the first time in 50 years. Yep. Three and two. The runner does not go. It's grounded over the head of Bronia in the right field for a base hit. Hanson on his way to third. The throw to third base is cut off. Not in time. And... Uh, now runners at first and third with one man up and the pitcher coming up. Well we told you Chad Fonville one of the top four in infield hits this was an infield hit but close enough. He jammed it off that dirt in front of home plate just enough to get it over the head of Rico Bronya Everett decided to make a throw to third and fortunately Husky was able to make the stop on the throw because this ringhouse and Ed was still trying to get over there to back it up. This ball had gotten by. It would have been a run scored. Everett missed cutoff man here. Husky made sure he got off the base and see Isringhausen just getting into the picture. 
Now the Mets have to look for the squeeze play. They're going to do it the safe way, a regular sacrifice to move the runner to second. They're not going to gamble on the suicide squeeze. Mets won the first game of the series with a suicide squeeze bunt in the bottom of the ninth inning. And uh, there's always that possibility when you have a pitcher at the plate. Bill Spires was the man who laid that bunt down to win the ball game for the Mets over the Dodgers with the suicide squeeze. Runner going from first, the pitch is taken, and it's a stolen base. And now they don't have to worry about sacrificing the runner second. And again, is Ringhausen not paying any attention at first base to the runner there, and Fonville has his 14th stolen base. Yeah, just forgot about him. So now Nomo, just go ahead and try and help himself out or squeeze. Nomo has driven in one run this year as he takes that pitch for ball two, two balls and one strike. He struck out his first time up. So in this inning, after a strikeout, a home run by DeShields, a walk to Hansen on a 3-2 pitch, a base hit on a 3-2 pitch by Fonville, and now runners at second and third to tie him run at second base. Fastball a strike, and it's in there for a count of two balls and two strikes. Got to get Nomo out to get out of a situation that could turn into something ugly for the New York Mets. Nomo's had four hits, one run batted in in his career, and he hits us down to first base. He'll get a run on the out, and the time run moves over to third. Hansen scores from third to make it four to three in favor of the Mets, and going to third base on the out is Bonville. So Nomo gets his second run batted in on the out, and that was where his ringhausen needed a strikeout. Yep, give credit to Nomo. He had to get the bat on the ball and did. And with Bronya back at first, he had no chance to make a play at the plate. Runner Hansen was off and running. Once uh, Nomo put the bat on the ball, Nomo's got an RBI. And that'll bring up Brent Butler. Butler has struck out and walked. And he has a runner on first base, a chance to tie. It'll be a tough play at first, and a great play by Isringhausen as he comes up with a bunt, makes an unbelievable backhand throw, and picks up the out to save a tie ball game. So an outstanding job by Butler for the out as the Dodgers get two, get within one in the score at the end, uh, three and a half innings, the Mets four, the Dodgers three. Now here's a word from Nobody Beats the Wiz. That's leading four to three in the bottom of the fourth inning. This game is brought to you by Nobody Beats the Wiz Home Entertainment Centers. And by your New York, New Jersey, Connecticut Lexus dealer who invites you to test drive a Lexus today. Well, an exciting play to end the inning to keep the Dodgers from tying the game as in ring is Ringhausen made an outstanding play on Butler's attempted bunt for a base hit. And the Mets come to the plate here in the bottom of the fourth inning. The first pitch by Nomo fouled back out of play. Magnificent play here. If Isringhausen doesn't make it, nobody's going to. You see, Kent's already moved over towards first. Isringhausen, all or nothing, sprawling on his belly and made the flip to Rico Bronio. And the second pitch to Thompson, the split finger fastball, a call strike for strike two. Thompson struck out, swinging at the split finger his first time up. Split finger, a very tough pitch for a free swinger, and Thompson is all of that. Gets another split finger, strike three call. Seventh strikeout for Nomo. Boy, he really tied him up. He struck out the last three that he's faced this he took something off of not a lot of velocity on this but great location Ryan Thompson thought it might have been a little bit outside but he's gone seventh strikeout he came in leading the National League in strikeouts and now the batter is Butch Husky and Husky takes ball one Husky flying to right field his first time up One hundred eighty two strikeouts for no more so far. Two balls no strikes to Husky. 
and the fastball hit over third. Good play by Hanson. He guns at the first and picks up the out. Kelly Stinnett, the batter. Kelly struck out his first time up as Hansen picks up the assist on that play, which was not an easy play. Throwing a strong arm on his throw to first base, and Stinnett takes a strike of fastball. Kelly struck out his first time up. Hitting at 229 for the year, three home runs, 13 runs batted in. Mets leading four to three, bottom half of the fourth inning. And the split finger called strike for strike two. Nomo settling in now after the Mets got him for four runs on a three run home run by Vizcaino in the third and a solo home run by Everett. They were back to back. And the fastball, strike three. His eighth strikeout in four innings and a one, two, three inning. The score at the end of four. It is the Mets four on the Dodgers three. And here's a word from Bob Stores. The Broadcasters Hall of Fame receiving the Ford C. Prick Award for outstanding broadcasting. Did his broadcasting in his early days for the Washington Senators in Washington, D.C. Started there in 1946. Bob Wolf. Delightful guy. Loves the game of baseball. A real He's fan. First Shows guy, up to watch games. First guy to ever play the ukulele, ukulele at the uh, Hall of Fame ceremonies. Even Dizzy didn't do that, no, huh? No, he did. <laughs> and Musial didn't play the harmonica there either. This guy's <laughs> the first musician that has ever appeared at the Hall of Fame ceremonies. As we go to the top of the fifth, and Jose Opperman takes a strike. Offerman with a base hit his first time up one for two in this game. Does he and Pee Wee ever do the Wabash cannonball up there. I haven't heard that but I'll tell you what happened. Uh, Musial and Bob Wolf got together late at night. It'd have to be late. It'd at have night. to be. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, combined as Musial played the harmonica and uh, Bob Wolf played the ukulele. Oh, you've never heard a harmonica and ukulele put together have you. That's an all star act right yeah, there. Yeah, You don't want to hear that. No. No. <laughs> You don't want to hear that. That that'll never never sell. Hasn't got a chance to rival <laughs> chamber music. Huh? No. Two strike pitch to Offerman inside. It's one ball and two strikes. Musial will play the harmonica if you got two men in the men's room. I mean, <laughs> here's the one-two pitch and he hits him. So that puts the time runner on as Offerman is hit by the pitch. Got him pretty good. Offerman's having a few words with Jason Isringhausen, but obviously Isringhausen had no desire to put him on here. Stopped halfway down to take that guard off his right leg and, and a little towards the mound side when he did it. So Offerman is on, and that'll bring up the dangerous hitter, Mike Piazza. Oh, Jason Esringhausen that's another first. That's the first hit batter at the major league level for the rookie. Piazza has struck out and walked in his two appearances today. Getting at 357, 18 home runs, 57 runs batted in. He has tremendous power the opposite way and the curveball for ball one. Leading hitter in the National League is Tony Gwynn. Gwynn is at 366. As you check out our Toyota American League scoreboard. The Atza doesn't qualify with enough plate appearances to be in the National League stats, but he will be, and that pitch is taken for ball two. So again, Isringhausen getting behind as he pitches here in this ballgame. One of the things you'd like to see him do if you're pulling for his side is to get out in front of the hitters. His best pitch, the curveball. The 2 0 pitch. Fastball, and it is fouled back. My quick math is right, Ralph. Uh, at this point, you would need 328 at bats to qualify for the offensive leader categories. And Mike Piazza's got 293. 
Oh, he'll be into that category shortly unless he gets back on the DL. He was on the DL earlier this year with a bad thumb. Runner goes. The pitch is hit to right field, deep right field, and it is back to the warning track where it's caught by Everett. Everett throws back to first base, and Hofferman, who is known for a lot of mental lapses, sort of jogged back when he saw that throw go to first. He put on the afterburner to get back ahead of time. You better read the scouting reports about Kyle Everett in right field. He will throw to first base on any opportunity. And this time with the runner going, Offerman was all the way down there. Bronya tries to deke it at first by playing as though it's not coming in. Offerman got back, but not way ahead of the ball. So now one away, and Eric Karras will be the batter. Eric is 0 for 2. Offerman at first base with that one out, and Harris pops it up in the shallow center field. Brian Thompson, the center fielder, two men away. Way the ball's carrying to right, you have to assume that swirling wind here at Shea is going that way because it's blowing directly in from center if you take a look at the flag, as it has most of this series and a pretty good wind. But right field, as Ralph mentioned earlier today, balls hit that way. Seem to be just scooting on up in the air with a pretty good carry out there. One of the things about Shea Stadium and when the Jets played here, they found it out. The wind swirls so much in this ballpark, you can't go by the flag that's on the center field fence. Blowing in from center, as you saw in that ball, but seemingly out to right. Jets used to put a special little flag on the field goals for the uh, field goal kicker to know exactly which way the wind was blowing. Raul Mondesi now the batter and the throw to first base. Offerman has tried to steal eight times this year and he's been successful just once. He's one of the few guys in the ball club that hasn't totaled up a pretty good amount of stolen bases. Mondesi with an infield base hit and a strikeout in his two appearances. Got struck out in a 3-2 fastball his last time up. And there's another fastball. He swings to it for strike one. Dodgers in day games with a record of 12 and 13. On the sea with 42 extra base hits. 18 in the big category, the home run category. Mets leading 4 to 3, the runner at first base. Offerman and that pitch high in the count, one ball and one strike. Mets and Dodgers have played eight games. The Mets have won three, the Dodgers five. And the Mets have won the first two games of this three game series. Runner goes, big jump, and the pitch has taken no chance at all in second. And another stolen base for the Dodgers. Butler had two in the third. Well, they're, Kelly Stinnett doesn't have a chance here on, on all of these situations today. Isringhausen is not holding the base runner, and you saw there, not any chance at all. He was already on the bag before the ball even close to Jeff Kent, who took the throw. Four stolen bases for the Dodgers in this game. Butler with two, Bonville with one, and now Offerman with his second of the year in nine attempts. Next pitch to Mondesi pulled foul. The count two and two. On the scene, Day Ball has done well. He's at 350. On had a tremendous on base percentage. He is eighth in the league in runs scored. For a guy who has the kind of power that he has to also be up there in runs is a real credit to him. Not only gives you the long ball, he gives you a chance to get on and give somebody else an RBI chance. Now a 2 2 to pitch. One on and missed. And Isringhausen gets him again with a fastball. That retires aside. One runner left at second. And the score at the end of four and a half innings. It's the Mets four, the Dodgers three. And here's a word from Lexus. Maybe we can get him in the ballpark. Why don't you run out there, Gary? <laughs> See if we can get that chain off there. As we go to the bottom of the fifth, here is Gary Thorne. Jason Esringhausen down the line. Bonville over, and Esringhausen has got a leadoff double. His second major league hit, his first major league two-bagger. 
Well, he was walked his first time up, and that led to three runs for the Mets, and now his first Nothing extra base no hit, and it comes off the tough pitcher, Nomo. He'll be talking about that forever. Pulsifer won't have a chance. Lasorda's got to be going nuts over there. The Isringhausen has drawn a walk and now hits a double against Nomo. Bill Pulsifer, he'll be hearing about this from his buddy on this day at the plate. Yep. <laughs> they room together. It's going to be a tough <laughs> night for <laughs> Pulsifer. <laughs> He's going to hear a lot of stories about his strength. Here's Joe Orsalak now. Mets lead at 4-3. Oh. Mets now have picked up four hits, four runs on four hits off Nomo. Orsalak scored in the third inning when he drew a walk. Came ahead of Vizcaino on the three-run shot. Carl Everett has a solo shot back-to-back -back homers by Vizcaino and Everett in that third inning, accounting for the Mets' four runs. That one to center field, not too deep. Butler moving in. Wynn will bring it in further. Isringhausen tags and never moves. <laughs> he was tagged up, which is very good, but he knew he <laughs> wasn't going to go anywhere. Why waste the steps? Shortstop just kind of leaned off the bag. Orsalak retired one away. Jose Vizcaino, his second home run of the season, the three-run homer in the third inning. Giving the Mets at that point a three-to-one lead. Vizcaino is also flied out. He's hit the ball hard twice. His first at bat was a fly ball to right. He pulled Nomo. Had good wood on it. And Ao Nomo was seven and one at home, three and two on the road this season. Here's the fastball of Vizcaino up high. One of the things that's interesting, Vizcaino might possibly, and I say this, it's a remote outside possibility, be traded to the California Angels. They're looking for a shortstop, and uh, he's been mentioned. There, Gary DeScarcina injured and out for the year for the Angels. Who oh, fooled him on that one, that fork ball breaking down and away. It got not so bad. I don't mean this negatively, but uh, Ducky Dick Schofield had to come back. They re-signed him. I don't know if he's been called up yet or not. He was in the minors. I think he was called up. I, I'm not sure of that. I'm not either. But they are looking for a shortstop. They need a shortstop. This guy would really fill that bill, wouldn't yeah. he? Yeah. And the Mets could make a super deal. Wouldn't be too popular at this point. But they could possibly make a super deal yep. and get somebody that was really talented because uh, those pennant race teams, they they got to win now. Yep. And they've got, of course, Ray Ordonez, who's expected to be starting at short next year for the Mets. A triple A ball. So uh, keep an eye on that one. Yeah, he's an heir apparent that Ordonis. He is something else. Foul back, a ball and two strikes. He got a strike while the iron is hot. And uh, obviously the Mets haven't got any chance this year. And uh, it would be unpopular because Vizcaino's having a good year. But that's when you can make a trade for a ball player like Vizcaino and get somebody in return that's outstanding. He's an outstanding glove at short, and he's fifth among shortstops in RBIs in baseball. Only Abbott, Dunstan, Larkin, and Clayton in the National League are ahead of him. Towards first, Hisringhausen will move up as Carros takes it to the bag, just ahead of Escaino. There are two down. Right fielder. Hisringhausen on at third base now with two away for Carl Everett. So Vizcaino really would fill that bill. I mean, that's. That's a deal that's dying to be made because the Mets can make that move. They they're going to have to do something with this guy. I know after the season if they're going to bring Ordonez up to play and Ordonez has been uh, seen by all the scouts and they all rank him right next to Ozzie Smith defensively. So you're talking about an, a player who is a outstanding player with ability defensively Two down ever had a home run is last time up. I talked to Mookie Mookie was down. Triple A Mookie Wilson still working for the Mets saw has seen Ordonez play a lot this season and I asked Mookie I said you tell me how good he is Mookie Mookie said he said it may be sacrilegious to say this but I think he's almost as good as Ozzy now when Mookie says that Mookie is very short on superlatives for guys mm -hmm. who haven't played here yet Mookie's a professional ball player as all Met fans know who knew how to get it done so he wants to see it done before he sends out congrats but there was no question in his mind that Ordonez is that good. 2-0, swung out and missed off speed on the fork ball, 2-1. 
One of the things, Gary, about fielding, you can predict fielding because the fields are even better in the major leagues. If a guy can field in the minors, he's going to field in the majors. You can't say that about hitters. They might be able to hit in the minors, but it doesn't mean they're going to hit up here. But you can certainly predict a person with talent fielding. And Vizcaino is an outstanding shortstop, but Ordonis is, is up at the top episode. I mean, he put him in with Ozzie Smith. You're talking about Ozzie Smith, in my viewpoint, was the greatest defensive shortstop that's ever played the game of baseball, hands down. Yep. I mean, there's nobody close. You got a kid you're putting in that category. Two balls, two strikes, two down. Mets up 4 3. Isring housing at third. Nomo's delivery, and did Everett go around? No. So the count is full, three balls and two strikes. And to Jose Vizcaino's credit, see Kent on deck. Busy has had to play this whole season with Ordonez in the background and has done it professionally every day. Well, he's a terrific kid. There's no doubt about it. He's done a terrific job for the Mets. Inside corner, got him. Everett knew it. He hoped otherwise. Nine strikeouts for Nomo. Now this from Roy Rogers. Thanks for joining us here in WWOR at Shea Stadium on this Sunday as the Mets try to make it four in a row. They've got the 4-3 lead as we go to the top of the sixth. Our new Dodge quiz. Five Mets have hit three home runs in one game. Two of them came versus the Dodgers. Can you name them? Which two had three home run games against the Dodgers? I can name one. And it set off Lasorda on a tirade that was unbelievable, and that was Dave Kingman. The line out of Shields. Well, there's one. We're four short, though. <laughs> no, we only need two, I think. Oh, only only two. the two hit them against the Dodgers. Yeah. Oh, okay. Just, just the two hit them against the Dodgers. And they're giving us clues in our ear. The other one was also it was at Dodger Stadium. Both of them were hit there. Watching Ralph, the smoke is coming out oh, of his I'll ears. Tell you, this is tough. <laughs> <laughs> Two ball, one strike on to Shields. 26 year old Delano to Shields, who delivered a home run and a single, two for two. I know Jim Hickman hit three in one game, but they weren't at Dodger Stadium. Dodger Stadium was when they built it in 1962. <laughs> <laughs> That's a long time ago. That's a long time. <laughs> 3-1. The Shields bunting for the base hit. It's going to be a tough play, Bronya. No way. A bunt single. That's speed of the Shields, and he's having himself a day trying to get back into the starting lineup on a regular basis. He's three for three. He's certainly trying to get back in the good graces of Tom Lasorda, and he's doing it here today. Third base hit, and that's a good bunt. Is Ringhausen slow getting over there. He's got to get off that mound, but again, he's in trouble with a time run on at first base with nobody out. And some more speed over there. The Shields can run. Dave Hansen up throw Rico Brony into the runner, preventing it from going by. Hansen checking to see whether or not Tommy Lasorda wants him to try and move the runner up. Mets are leading by one here in the sixth. Dodgers now out hitting the Mets 6-4. Hansen hit into a double play, drew a walk and scored in the fourth. The Shields with the lead. And at him leaning. Oh, he turned towards second. That was close. That move to first base was a good one there. Quick feet. You got to move those feet in a hurry. See that little quick spin and Hanson takes it up high, ball one. The Shields, who had picked up 27 stolen bases last year, always been a base runner with Montreal. He had a season where he had 56 back in 91. El Fatano making sure Hanson knows what's on here. Nobody out to Shields at first. 1-0 count. The Shields has cut down that lead by a good step over there after that close play. Red 7, the Astros 1. The Reds 8-0 against the Astros this year. The Reds helping themselves. There goes the Shields. Hit and run. No straight steal. Stanette 
Shortstop side of the bag. And another five for five for the Dodgers in stealing bases today. And no chance for Stanett. Big jump by the Shields. So the advanced scouts passing the word along to the Dodgers that you can run on Isringhausen. That's something that you can learn to do, though, to hold runners on. And it's no contest. Best part of this inning is the fact you're working to the bottom of the batting order. You get a pitcher coming up. Here's one of them, Dave Kingman, and the other was Claude L. Washington in 1980. We had the home runs, three of them in a game against the Dodgers. Totally forgot about Claude L. And a 3 0 count to Dave Hansen. Nobody out. Hickman, Strawberry, and Carter, the others that have hit three home runs in one game. And nobody's done it here at Shea. They've all been oh. on the road. 3 0 pitch, grooves the fastball, 3 and 1. Three one count on Dave Hansen Delano to Shields at second base represents the potential tying run here in the sixth inning and he's really jockeying with Jose Vizcaino Vizcaino trying to hold him as close as possible to the bag keeping that hole between short and third but Hansen three one goes to second with it Jeff Kent. Retire Hansen, but it does get the Shields over. Good job by Hansen. His job there was to get the Shields to third, and he got the ground ball to the right side of the infield to do it. One away. Well, the Dodgers have a runner at third without getting the ball out of the infield, and the batter coming up is an outstanding bunner. Bonville and the Mets will play their infield in for a play at the plate. Mets move it in. Fonville has picked up a single and flied to center. He has a five-game hit streak. He's had a good series. He's had four hits in this series at eight at bats. And some decent numbers of runners in scoring position as well. Bonville switch hitter. Center field, not deep. Thompson, runner tagging to Shields. Thompson's got it to Shields. Tags won't come. Among the things that Thompson can do, he can throw. He's an outstanding defensive player. The Shields tags up on this play. He makes a good bluff down the line. The throw, though, would have killed him. He would have had no chance, even though it was offline. Now the pitcher coming up. So the bluff was there, but it didn't work as far as making Thompson hurry his throw or throw it too far offline. Now Nomo's up. Isring how's it out of the stretch. Adeo Nomo, an RBI and a ground ball out in the fourth inning, has also struck out four hits in 53 at bats this season. For Nomo. The Shields at third base. Isringhausen, one ball, one strike. Mets with a 4 3 lead and two down here in the sixth inning. You get a good look at this 26 year old. One one. Fastball there at the knees. One ball, two strikes. Nomo is already won one Rookie of the Year award. He won Japan's Rookie of the Year award back in 1990. He was also the league's MVP that year. Had a chance to add another one in this league. Breaking ball. Missed outside with a curve. Two and two. Not sure you really want to be throwing curve balls to Nomo. Well, not hanging curveballs, but this uh, was the big hanger, but it was not over the outside part of the plate. 2 2 fastball, see you later. Six strikeouts for Izzy. He protects the lead, runner left at third. We go to the bottom of the sixth inning with the Mets leading at 4 3 after this from Lexus. Lexus. Started out for the Mets, Kent, Bronia, and uh, Thompson do up here. We go to the bottom half of the sixth inning, and the Mets leading at 4 3. Well, Nomo has nine strikeouts in this ballgame, and in Japan, a credit association 
in Osaka, Japan, is raising the interest rate on special savings account by one thousandth of a percentage point for every Nomo strikeout. The Osaka Credit Association will no longer offer the increases when the season ends. <laughs> no wonder. <laughs> <laughs> they, they should have gone back and checked his minor league numbers before they agreed to that. <laughs> I mean, they're going to go out of business the way he's going. <laughs> And the pitch is taken for a strike. They're getting up there to a couple of percentage points shortly here. <laughs> They're getting to the real, the decimal point's going to be moving. Moving over, yeah. <laughs> Jeff Kent, a single at his first at bat, struck out his last time up. Nomo has walked two and has struck out nine. Foul back. That's a picked up the four runs on four hits off Nomo. The back to back homers in the third inning by Vizcaino and Everett, accounting for all four of the runs. O2 delivery. And he bounces that one out in front. One handed pickup, Mike Piazza that time. Well, it looks pretty. Doesn't mean anything here with nobody on base, but uh, it shows you the dexterity of the catcher, Piazza. He's done an outstanding job learning how to catch. Got him on the fork ball again. Ten strikeouts. First baseman, Rico for Nomo. So he's in the double-digit category again. Well, again, it's a split-finger fastball, and this ball out of the strike zone, in the dirt, but can't unable to... Keep that bat off the ball. He has struck out ten or more nine times this season, including this game today. And Rico Bronia has been a victim twice. Two walks, ten strikeouts for him. He had 16 strikeouts against Pittsburgh on June 14. To the high for Nomo. This is with that one, two balls and no strikes on Bronia. Brony only a couple of hits in his last 14 at bats. Deo Nomo's fastball, foul back, third base side, two and one. You know, the Dodgers paid him two million to come over here sight unseen. They didn't know whether he could pitch here. Good play in the stands there. The Giants were also trying to get him. They fell short. They didn't want to match, I guess, the two million the Dodgers paid up front. Giants haven't scored a run off Nomo this year. <laughs> they, they should have upped the ante a little bit. They're wishing mightily. <laughs> Maybe 2.2 would have worked. Uh, two ball, one strike count. It's going to be a battle royal in the West Boy by the end of the season with teams playing one another. Here's the 2 1 delivery. And he checks the swing, 3 and 1. For the Dodgers this season against their Western opponents, they are 7 and 3 against the Rockies. They've only played six games against San Diego. They're two and four against them. And the Giants, they are seven and four against San Francisco. Pop up to shallow center. Fred Butler will put that one away. Bronia's retired. Two down here in the sixth inning. The Mets up by one, four, three. Thompson. Well, Brett will go back on the road with Los Angeles tonight. At Sunfield, a very tough field to play. It's tough here in this ballpark. It moves from left to center to right. The toughest Sunfield, I think, is the left field Sunfield in Yankee Stadium in the summer. Oh. Right at you. One of the things that makes it tough, they have that high stadium with the tiers, and the sh shadows make such a difference there. Yep. Brian Thompson has also been a strikeout victim twice. Deo Nomo taking something off the pitch. Thompson way out in front of it. Third start against the Mets. 1-0 and against them with a victory earlier on this year and his first Major League win. Now 10-3 and on the season for Nomo. Two ball, one strike count on Thompson. Ryan a couple of hits and nine at-bats in this series. And in his return off the DL. 2-1. Pete Harnish had the operation on his shoulder. He'll start throwing in a couple of months. Bobby Jones is somewhat iffy for his next start with that bruise on the index finger of his pitching hand that 
caused him to come out the other night. It's still bothering him. 2-2 to Thompson, and he got him. 11 Ks, three of them against Ryan Thompson. And he retires the Mets in order here in the sixth inning. After six, the Mets lead at four. Three, now this word from Cadillac. Dodgers out hitting him. The Mets got it in the run column. Day in, day out at Homer on the Road, you can always count on the great taste of Bud Light. It won't fill you up and never let you down, so make it a Bud Light. New pitcher is going to be Doug Henry as Jason Isringhausen, a chance to win his third, leaves the game having worked six innings. Gave up the three runs on six hits, walked three and struck out six. Giving up one long ball, Delano to Shields with a solo shot in the fourth inning. You see the numbers. For Doug Henry, who's picked up a win in each of his last two outings, he worked a scoreless inning with a couple of strikeouts on the ball game on the 18th. Ryan Thompson has come out of the ball game in a double switch here, and Damon Buford will come on to play center field for the Mets. The double switch. Jason Esteringhausen now will wait and watch and see whether or not. He's going to get a W in today's game, and Henry comes in here in a hold situation on behalf of the 22-year-old rookie. Good job by Izzy today. Got in trouble a little bit with the three walks he gave up. One of them scored, but overall, decent performance. Ralph Kiner to the seventh. Okay, and Jason leaving the ball game after six innings, and a very good job. Six strikeouts, walked a total of three, gave up a total of six hits and on the winning side of the ball game Doug Henry as Dallas Green looks on Dallas uh, getting something he never got earlier in the year from his bullpen he has a little more confidence in that bullpen as Brett Butler comes in to lead it off for the Dodgers the bullpen in the last 11 games with a 1.04 ERA and doing a good job. And the first pitch to Butler, ball one. Butler in this game, 0 for 2 with a walk. And he takes a strike, one ball and one strike. He came into the game hitting 313. His 0 for 2 has taken him down to 311. One home run, 28 runs batted in. First game against the Mets when he was traded Friday, traded in the afternoon, Friday afternoon, play for the Dodgers Friday night. He had a double and a triple. One and two on the foul ball as Henry works to the top of the batting order. One two pitch is hit in the air to right field Everett right there and he makes the play as he comes in with the sliding type catch. Everett was playing fairly deep on Butler so he had a pretty good run to get in front of this and it was sinking in a hurry on him. Made that slide look nice and easy though over towards center and in. So it's uh, out here in the top of the seventh inning and it brings up Jose Offerman Offerman one for two he was hit by a pitch his last time up and he takes ball one. Mets have a record from their bullpen of 18 wins 18 losses 19 saves but they have blown 13 saves so that bullpen has really been the Achilles heel for the New York Mets this year. And the first part of the season Ralph when the Mets did not play well that was the primary reason. Started the first game of the season in Colorado that's never really changed a whole lot although the last nine games not too bad. That pitch a ball so it's 2 1 to Offerman. Bullpen has given up three earned runs in the last 11. Helped improve the overall team ERA. And that's three and one, so Henry falls behind to Offerman with Piazza on deck. That's not a good uh, scenario. No. Mets leading by one, leading four to three. They have four runs on only four hits. 
Three one pitch Offerman bunts it to the third base side a chance for Husky bear hands it can't get it there in time. So the Mets. Again see the time run on at first base Husky. Made a good play bear handing the ball he had absolutely no chance to do it with the glove. But he still couldn't get the man. That's four infield hits today for this Dodger team that feasts on this kind of base hit. Got a pretty good charge on that, but Offerman's got good speed. And even with a strong throw, he's not going to get Jose Offerman. So with four infield hits out of their seven, time run on the first base, and Mike Piazza, the batter, Mike is 0 for 2. Also has walked, and he goes after the fastball and misses it. a vitally important inning as you see the numbers for Henry against right and lefties when you got the middle of this Dodger Dodger order up Henry with a record of three wins five losses off him in the short lead at first base the pitch back to Piazza ball and it's one and one missed with a fastball. After three it's Chicago Colorado tied and one of course the Dodgers watching that Colorado board. They lead the Rockies by one game. One one pitch and Piazza goes after the high fastball and fouls it back. Piazza came into this series with a 16 game hitting streak stopped. The day before he came to Shea Stadium, he had that streak stopped after hitting in 16 consecutive ball games. One ball, two strikes. Mets on top, 4-3. We're in the top of the seventh inning. One man out. That's a double play depth. And the pitch back is low and outside. Missed with a fastball. The yeah, answer with 18 home runs, 57 runs batted in. He gets your attention when he's at that plate. Now the 2 2 pitch. Hit in the hole, a base hit. So. Runners now at first and maybe third. The play to third base is not in time. And the Dodgers have the time run a third and some daring base running by Offerman as he goes first to third on a single to left field. Orsalak making a pretty good throw to third. It might have got him, but it wasn't held on to by Husky. You watch this throw, I think you're going to see it hit Offerman on the way in. Not that it made the difference. Orsalak was surprise that Offerman went but he got in on the ball in a hurry the one hopper is Huskies waiting to field it now just kind of bounce between them good play by Offerman he really motored coming around second he just didn't hold up had the play right in front of him and now with a time run at third base the go ahead run at first the batter is Eric Karras and he is 0 for 3 today and he takes the first pitch for ball one that's the kind of baseball that you have to play to be a winning type ball club and it Force the Mets into a situation now with runners at first and third. One man out, the infield a double play depth, and this ball is fouled back out of play. On that base hit, it's why it's so hard to get Piazza out. He muscled that ball into left field. He, that's how he gets some of his hits. He just he makes such great contacts, and he's so strong that even on a decent pitch, because he was jammed on that, he still hit the ball hard. You're absolutely right. It was strictly strength that got that ball through the infield. Harris also a hot batter coming into this series. Won four games with home runs in the last two weeks and that pitch taken low and it's two and one. Harris tied for seventh in home runs. He's fourth in runs batted in seventh and extra base hits eighth and slugging. Dave Bichette still loving Colorado. Well he gets back for that home cooking eye up in the hills and he drives him in. And the pitch back is hit foul, so it goes to two and two. Bichette, for a long time, didn't have a home run in the road. Almost into the end of July. Sign her up. 
Two balls, two strikes to Eric Karras. He's having a career year here this year. Short lead at first base by Piazza. And the 2-2 pitch. Strike three called, and that could be a big, big strikeout. Got the fastball by. Karras has struck out once today, 78 times on the season. But this looked like a pitch that he would hit. Henry just came in and challenged him. It was the position of it on that outside corner, and Karras, no argument, turned and walked away. Now the rest of the heart of the betting order, another tough man, Raul Mondesi. Mondesi one for three, but he did strike out twice against Isringhausen, who struck out a total of six players while he was in the game through six innings. First pitch to Mondesi, curveball topped out to the mound, and it will be an out at first base. No run scored by the Dodgers. Two hits, two left to score at the end of six and a half. It's a Mets for the Dodgers three. And here's a word from Bex. Four runs in the third to take the lead four to one. A three run home run by Jose Vizcaino. And the solo home run coming back to back by Carl Everett made it four to one. Then the Dodgers got two back in the fourth inning. And that's the way it stands at four to three. For the Mets here in their half of the seventh. Butch Husky to lead it off, and the first pitch by Nomo hit the deep left field, but a high fly ball. Will it go? It's going, going, it's gone. Goodbye. Butch Husky with his first base hit for the New York Mets. That's coming up from the International League where he led the league in home runs, and it has put the Mets up five to three. the way to get on the board after coming up from Triple A and coming up here with the Mets looking to see if he can deliver some power for them. That is his first major league home run. And a big one that puts the Mets up by two and that will bring up Gilliston in. He swings through the fastball. Third home run given up by Nomo in this ball game. He now has given up 13 and Husky with his first major league home run. Boy, he is strong. A one strike pitch, breaking ball for a ball, one ball, one strike. Oh, Nomo giving up now the 14 home runs on the season, and this one by Husky way back there in the alley. No chance. And he's done everything right since being called up. Looking at a chance to play third base regularly, fantastic defensive plays. Need power in the lineup for next year. He's got a chance to provide that. Delivers the long ball. Boy, he could really be yeah. a big key factor for the Mets if he's for real. And the one-two pitch to Sinet swung on and missed. And Sinet has now struck out three straight times. That's strikeout number 12 for Nomo. Center fielder Damon Buford. Only once before has Nomo given up three home runs in a game, but that really shouldn't be counted. It was at Colorado. <laughs> <laughs> no home runs count there in anybody's stats, right? <laughs> Boy, everything flies out of that ballpark. And now the batter, Damon Buford, he chops it over the head of the third baseman, Hanson. He's going for two. He slides and he's safe. Damon Buford with a two base hit in the Mets have a runner in second base. This has been some sort of a ball game as advertised. Well, there's a Baltimore short double. Damon Buford had the third baseman. Hanson moved in on him. Buford slashes it down again into that dirt, which is hard in front of home plate. We've seen a couple go off that dirt today and take off over infielders' heads. No chance for Hanson. Fonville rushed the ball, but if Offerman can take an extra base, Buford says, so can I. So Buford at second base, and the bat is Joe Orsalak. Joe in this game 0 for 2 with a walk and a run scored. He takes the first pitch for ball one. Bullpen active for the Dodgers. Estacio and Cummings, the two throwing there. The left-hander is Cummings. 
as the Mets lead it by a score of five to three, batting in the bottom of the seventh inning. Nomo came in this game with a record of ten and three. He won his first game ever in the major leagues against the Mets, and now on the losing side of this game. One ball, no strikes, and Orsolak drills it down the right field line, but it's foul. Strike. The Mets with three home runs in this game off of Nomo. Only the second time that the opposition has hit three home runs in one game off of Nomo. All three of the home runs have come off fastballs. You can sit on that fastball, you can hit it. One ball, one strike. And Orsolak goes after the split finger fastball. One ball and two strikes. That's the one you can't hit. So if he can get you to go after his pitch, if he can get ahead on the count and give you that split fingered fork ball pitch, he's got you where he wants you. If he has to pitch you fastball wise, then you real got a got a real shot at him. One two delivery and it's it hard to first base. Karras a good play on it. The race to the bag. Karras wins it, and Buford goes over to third base. Shortstop You're watching Mets Baseball 95 on UPM 9 WWOR TV, Secaucus, New Jersey. That was a good play by Alex Carroll at first base. The ball, instead of coming up on him on the hop, stayed down. This is why you start as a fielder with your glove down. You can always bring it up if you have to, but getting it down when a ball stays down, almost impossible to do. The so runner at third and two men out, and Jose Vizcaino, the hitting hero of this ball game, at the plate. Three-run home run in the third, put the Mets up three to one. He has one hit and three at bats off normal, and he takes outside for ball one. Vizcaino has done an outstanding job with runners in scoring position. Leads the club by having driven in. 36 and that ball bouncing in the in the dirt and Piazza a good play to block. Nomo's given up as many as seven runs in a game. That was his second outing of the season against Colorado. He went five games in the start non-decision. Took a loss to Montreal and then that first win on June 2nd against the Mets and has rolled since then. Ten and three in the year that pitch swung on and missed. One ball, two strikes. Ideal Nomo on the mound for the Dodgers. What a sensation he's been. The split finger swung on and missed. Piazza completes the strikeout by getting the out at first base, and that retires the side. But the Mets get one. And after seven innings of play, it's the Mets leading by a score of five to three, and we'll return right after this message. Top of the eighth inning, the Mets on top by a score of five to three. Delano of the Shields will lead it off. He's three for three in the game with a home run. And he takes the first pitch from Doug Henry, ball one. The Shields with a bunt base hit his last time up. Came into the game hitting 235 with his three for threes now at 242 and he takes a strike one ball and one strike. Well the Dodgers on the short end of this game they have lost the first two of this series. There's a strike call and that's one and two. And they're losing streak at three straight games. Mets have a series to play with the Dodgers out in Los Angeles later on in September. And the fastball fouled back. The count stays at one and two. Bill Madden had an interesting article in the paper today about the Cub curse and the ex-Cub factor that plays a big part in baseball. You know, the Cubs haven't been in a World Series in 50 years, and the theory is that the more ex-Cubs your team has, the worse your team's chances are of winning. For instance, the Dodgers rose into first place two weeks ago when they got rid of an ex-Cub pitcher, Willie Banks. And they're in first place by one game. They get blamed for everything. 
<laughs> I love these theories as you look at the Toyota American League scoreboard. Now, there's another part of this that's interesting. Pitch back to the Shields, foul back out of play. About the same time, the Dodgers got Willie Banks and then got rid of him. He came to the Dodgers from the Cubs. About the same time, the Cubs, Steve Bouchel was released and he signed with Texas. And Texas promptly went into a swoon. But they came out of it when they released Bushell. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Bill, but I'm not going to Chicago for a while. And it swung on and missed. And a strikeout by Henry as he gets the leadoff batter here in the eighth inning. Third baseman Dave Hansen. And now with one away, the batter will be Dave Hansen. Hansen in this game 0 for 2 with a walk, and he takes the first pitcher called strike. Now the Rockies, and they're in contention, of course, with the Dodgers. They got a Cub player from the Cubs just a little while ago, Brian Hickerson. When they got him there in first place, since they've had him, they've dropped out of first. So the X Cup theory has an awful lot to go for, but there is one bit that we have to bring up to your attention because the Angels have more X Cup players on their ball club this year than any team in baseball. Well, that defies the whole theory. That's right, but you got to wait. They got five, okay? All right. But three of them are on the disabled list. <laughs> So you so have they don't so count. long as they don't play. <laughs> so as long as they stay on the DL, the California Angels have a chance. And there's ball two, two balls and two strikes. Uh, the Cub factor. I suppose I the next one will be on the Red Sox. How many of their players are around? Yeah, that might be in there too. There's <laughs> one hit through the infield in the right field for a base hit. So Hanson is on and that puts a timer on the plate, but not to worry. Bonville coming up does not have a home run. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Always got to put a, a disclaimer in there. Well, I have to do that because that's the other theory. See, as soon as you say that, if I don't disclaim it, then he would have had a home run here. That's the other truism in baseball. That's right. right. Like the no hitter you can't talk about. That's right. So Fonville, who has a base hit and three at bats coming up, no home runs for the year, but a. Uh, 288 batting average, and we're going to have a pinch hunter, runner for Hanson. Running for Dave Hanson, number 33, Gary Ingram. It's going to be Gary Ingram. Gary Ing Ingram, an infielder. He was in Friday night's ball game. So that puts a runner at first base with one out, and Bonville takes the first pitch for ball one. Also told today, Ralph, we're just looking. They've started the Oakland game. Baltimore playing at Oakland today, and Ron Darling, the former Met, was scheduled to pitch for the A's. We understand he has been put on waivers for purposes of giving him his unconditional release. He had been in the regular rotation for the Oakland A's. So Gary Darling put on waivers for release. One ball, one strike to count on Chad Fonville. Of course, Darling with some outstanding years with the New York Mets after coming to the Mets from Texas. There's a good off speed pitch in the count one and two. Lee Mazzilli going to the Texas Rangers in that trade for Darling. And another pitcher, and his name escapes me right now. He's a good pitcher. Went later on from the Mets. One ball, two strikes to count. That was one of the first trades that uh, the Mets made when Frank Cashin took over as general manager here for the Mets, and that was a beauty. Walt Terrell was the other pitcher, along with Gary Darling for Lee Mazzilli, and both of those pitchers for Ron Darling. The other pitchers, uh, outstanding. There's a good pitch, strike three call. So Doug Henry with a split finger fastball picks up a strikeout. That is his third and one and two thirds innings. And we'll see a pinch hitter. 
Bonville could not believe he was getting a curveball on this pitch. That was a good one. The inside corner. Henry with three Ks. So Fondell back to the bench, and now a pinch hitter is going to be Tim Wallach, and Wallach will probably stay in the ball game at third base. He was being rested. He's hit 500 against the Mets this year. No more out of the ball game, and at this point on the losing side of the game. Good curveball, strike one. Wally hitting 500 against the Mets this year with 14 hits, three of them doubles, one of them a triple, and one of them a home run. Overall, 256 batting average. And again, the curveball, strike two. And it's working, stay with it. Right now, the curveball is working. And now Wallach's got to protect down 0 and 2. Henry really ripping them off there. A little Burt Blylevin movement today on his curveball. Boy, and he had a good one. Wallach pitch hit him for the first time this year. Two strikes a count. And the fastball gets him. Doug Henry strikes out the side, and the inning is over. The score at the end of seven and a half innings, the Mets five, the Dodgers three, and here's a word from Glidden. It's with no more out of the game on the losing side. Left-hander John Cummings was in the ball game on Friday. Left-hander acquired out of the Seattle organization by the Los Angeles Dodgers. And Cummings comes on here. He suffered the first loss against the Mets, going a inning plus, but he exited with the go-ahead run on that the Mets later scored on that squeeze play on Friday. So John Cummings, the left-hander, that 3.81 ERA comes on here in the bottom half of the eighth inning, and uh, Mets did a good job hitting Nomo as they got their five runs on six hits with three home runs off him in seven innings. And Cummins will turn Everett around to the right hand side of the plate the switch hitter batting right handed for the first time Everett in this game with a solo home run and three at bats the other two times that he came to the plate he struck out and he takes inside for ball one Everett hit him 185 right handed and 250 left handed he takes the next pitch one ball one strike it'll be Everett, Kent, and Bronia for the Mets here in the bottom half of the eighth inning. They lead five to three. And a ball call. That's two balls and one strike. John Franco now throwing in the bullpen for the Mets. And this ball hit to the second base side, bobbled by the Shields, but he quickly recovers and he picks up the out. Second baseman Jeff Kent. Hideo Nomo out of the ball game, giving up five runs. All of them earned on six hits. He struck out 13 batters while he was in the ball game, and he walked two. And those two walks scored. They came in on a three-run home run by Vizcaino, who put the Mets up three to one. So he has the game-winning base hit in this ball game, Vizcaino. And Jeff Kent fouls it off at strike one. Kent in this game, one for three with two strikeouts. Elmo came in with a record of 10 and three. He was 1 and 0 against the Mets. Winning his first game ever in the major leagues against the New York Mets, against the New York Mets in Los Angeles. One strike pitch to Everett. Ball one, one ball and one strike. Dodgers are 14 and six in the starts that Nomo has made this season coming into today's game. So he has held them in virtually every game. And he did that again here today, even though the Mets were able to pick up the five runs off him, a two run differential. And this ball hit foul into the stands, one ball and two strikes. Nomo's undoing the home run ball, gave up three home runs. Three run home run to Jose Vizcaino, a solo home run to Carl Everett, and a solo home run to Butch Husky. Husky's first major league home run and his first hit this year since coming up from Norfolk. 
from out for the sweep, bro. Sweep. Mets have a chance to sweep the Dodgers in the three games. And this one fouled, so it stays at one and two. Dodgers swept the Mets in L.A. in their first West Coast appearance. The Mets win this ball game. They will have they will have won four games out of the nine play between these two clubs. Dodgers have never had more than a two game lead. Of course Colorado for most of the season had stayed on top until they went into the swoon earlier this month and uh, the Dodgers were able to overtake them. Never gotten Brian Hickerson. <laughs> they come. Not gonna let him forget that are you. Two balls and two strikes. I mean, the Angels better not get Visca in them. Well, no, Visca. Well, I wonder if it does it, it carry over. I don't does know it if have it to be direct? Over. I think it has to be direct. You got to go directly from the Cubs to the club for that curse to have an effect. This theory's got a lot of suppositions <laughs> in it. Huh? And a high pop-up to center field. Butler a lot of time to put the glasses down, shade from the sun, and make the catch. So two men away. And that'll bring up Rico Bronia. If you're looking ahead to the ninth inning, the Mets leading five to three, the Dodgers will have the top of their batting order coming up. So they're in a good position to come back in this ballgame. As far as the batting order is concerned. Now it's Bronia, and he singles up the middle off his first pitch. So Bronia gets his first hit. He had struck out twice and applied to center. One for four for the day, and the Mets have a runner on for a pinch hitter. Rico's going to like that. He's struggled against left handers lately. His average dropping all the way down to 227 against Southpaws on the season. But against Cummins, the left hander, he stays in on this fastball right back up the middle. That's where you want it to go. Chris Jones will be the pinch hitter, and he has done quite a job for the Mets as a pinch hitter. Jones, seven hits and 18 at bats as a pinch hitter. Three of them have been home runs, and he has driven in nine. Hitting 283 overall with eight home runs, 27 runs batted in. He takes the pitch at the knees for a call strike. Jones is another one of the many outfielders the Mets have who will be getting a look see Wallace on the bullpen phone as the season goes along here Dallas Green wants to get all of these people in give them an opportunity to play to put on some kind of a show give the Mets something to make decisions on in the offseason about who's going to be held on this team to be in the outfield for next year and a swing and a miss for a strike two count on Jones. Stasio throwing in the bullpen for the Dodgers. And this ball fouled into the stands. For the Cleveland Indians have won again today as they beat Milwaukee by a score of 8-5. to five. They had their 20th, 20th last at-bat win last night. They've now won 71 games this season. 71 and 34. And Jose Mesa has saved another one. And He's another. adding to his own record now of consecutive saves 37 for 37 for Mesa. That is unbelievable. Cleveland leading by 18 games going into today's action. The Mets in 1986 won their division over Philadelphia by 21 and a half games. Mm. Winning 106 games that year. Of course this year an abbreviated season 144 games. Instead of 162, a swing and a miss, and the strikeout ends the inning. One hit, one left, and as we go to the top of the ninth inning, the Mets leading by a score of five to three. Here's a word from your tri-state Ford dealers. Run ball games. They lead this one by two, and they will bring on their save leader, John Franco, to try and get it done here in the bottom half of the ninth inning. John's got 17 saves and 23 opportunities this season. Picking it up against number 17. Game against the Dodgers. Game yesterday, and he gets a chance for another one here. All right, now Heathcliff Slocum leads the National League in saves with 28. Franco is tied for ninth with Mark Wallers of Atlanta with the 17. 
And John has settled in well here over the last couple of weeks. Put the uh, saves up consistently by getting ahead of hitters throwing strikes and not walking people, which had bothered him for a while last month. Guys were getting on the top of that order when he came on uh, via the walk, and it was costing him some save opportunities. And let's check out our Nobody Beats the Wiz game summary. The Dodgers, no more, won seven innings, gave up six hits, five runs, all of them earned, 13 strikeouts, but he gave up three home runs, and that was his undoing. The Shields for the Dodgers with two hits and a solo home run, three hits in the ball game. And for the Mets, Isringhausen, six innings, six hits, six strikeouts, allowing three runs. Vizcaino, the big blow, the three-run home run that turned the ball game around, putting the Mets up three to one. And Husky, his first base hit, as well as Everett, Husky's home run and Everett's home run. Great credit to uh, Doug Henry. He is really proving himself as a reliable setup man. A couple of innings, only one hit, four strikeouts giving Estringhausen a chance to get his third win and Franco a chance to pick up the save. Good job by Henry. And that'll bring up Brett Butler and the Dodgers need two to tie. Butler in this game 0 for 3 with a walk. He had two stolen bases after the walk but didn't score. And the shadow's not yet a factor in this ball game. And the first pitch Franco's fastball fouled away. One of the key plays in the ball game with the score four to three in favor of the Mets in the fourth inning. Butler tried to bunt his way on, made a good bunt. Isringhausen came off the mound and backhanded the ball after he caught it to first base to get Butler by a half step to end the inning. Otherwise, the ball game would have been tied up at that point. Again, the fastball, again, the foul ball, strike two. Butler's faced Franco 14 times in his career for these guys who were teammates last Friday morning. Four for 14 for Butler off John Franco. Franco actually started his major league career with the Dodgers. He was straight traded away to Cincinnati because they thought they had the best bullpen pitcher in baseball, Steve Howe. But Howe got mixed up with drugs and no longer was a factor with the Dodgers. And after being on drugs and tested and losing seven times, he's still in baseball with the Yankees. One and two the count to Brett Butler. After Howell was in trouble, the Dodgers didn't have a relief pitcher for a while. So Butler flies out to center field for the first out here in the ninth inning. Well, that's a big out. You get a real tough guy out of there, and they, you don't want the leadoff man on anyway, but you certainly don't want a good base stealer like Butler to reach against you. And Franco battled him and got the fly ball. And now the batter will be Jose Offerman, who has been on twice, two for three. Actually, he has been on three times. He got on once when he was hit by a pitch. So Offerman, a good day for the Dodgers. Batting from the right-hand side. And the first pitch of fastball for ball one. Offerman's average 295. He's having a good offensive year, but he has made 28 errors at shortstop. This ball fouled back into the stands. One ball and one strike. As a matter of fact, the Dodgers are the worst fielding team in the National League. They've made a total of 92 errors and have a fielding percentage of 967, which belies the point you have to have defense to be on top. Uh, May just, not by season's end, though, Ralph. We'll have to wait and see. I mean, that's really dangerous to be. That's living dangerously. When you're relying on pitching that is the second best ERA, and that kind of a defense behind it, you're on a precipice, a dangerous one. Dodgers in hitting their ninth with a 260 team average, eighth in home runs with 95 coming into this game. Offerman, the lowest fielding percentage of shortstop in the National League. And the 2-1 pitch again fouled into the stands on the first base side. So can the Dodgers overcome their defense? That is the question that will be answered in about six weeks. I don't think they can. Very tough to do, although they do have good pitching. Yep. Speaking of 
defense. Maury Wills uh, wore number 30, and Offerman wears that number in honor of Maury Wills. This one popped down the line. It'll be in foul territory. So Offerman back to the plate. Two balls, two strikes to count. One out. We're in the top of the ninth inning. The Mets leading by two. And the Mets trying to sweep this series. And John Franco trying to pick up his 18th save of the year. No left-handed pitcher that has been a relief pitcher has ever won more games than John Franco. Save more games than John Franco would be best. Best way to put it. He beat the record of Dave Brigetti, and Brigetti now a starting pitcher again. I believe that. And again, it's fouled back into the stands. Brigetti, who was a great starter, and a lot of controversy when the Yankees moved into the bullpen, and now he's back starting again. Did a tremendous job as a relief pitcher. Two and two as the shadows now extend a little bit out in the hitters area not quite that tough yet indicating that ball is there and strike three call Offerman called out and strikes and now the Mets are out away from sweeping this series 11th Dodger to strike out and in this ball game the Mets have been struck out 14 times so 25 strikeouts in the game again location 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 like in real estate tied him up inside corner fastball you're just not going to hit that unless you are really looking for it you can't get the bat anywhere unless you've already started away from the plate how could he argue on that call that pitch was right in the strike zone now two men away and Mike Piazza the batter chops it to short a long throw to first in time and the Mets have swept the series the Mets have defeated the Dodgers three in a row as they have won it by a score of five to three Winning pitcher in the ball game was Jason Isringhausen. He's now three and two. The losing pitcher was Nomo, and his record stands at ten and four. John Franco picks up his 18th save, and the Mets have swept the series from the Dodgers. We'll be back with a recap right after this word from Nissan. I mean, Lasorda might be knocked out of the lead in the National League West by this loss here as the Mets won it by a score of five to three. Colorado is leading in their ball game over Chicago by a score of two to one that ball game in the fifth inning. So a tough visit to New York for Tommy Lasorda and it was the hitting of Jose Vizcaino that did him in. Our Budweiser player of the game Vizcaino getting a three run shot in the third inning coming off Nomo after a couple of walks. Vizcaino drilled one, and that was a very legitimate home run. So Vizcaino with a three-run homer, three RBIs in the ball game, our Budweiser player of the game, and we'll be back to take a look ahead after this from Budweiser. Tough stop for the Dodgers as they lose all three ball games to the New York Mets. Tommy Lasota better off on the bench than in the clubhouse at this point. <laughs> 